Well, hello everyone. I'm Michael Spinella. I'm host of the Canadians Connection podcast, and you are joining us tonight for a Rocket Sports Media live stream watch along. And I'm joined here by my colleague Nathan. Uh, this is the Rocket Sports Media YouTube channel, so make sure you hit subscribe. And we appreciate you all joining us tonight as the Montreal Canadiens take on the Detroit Red Wings for the final game of the season. And believe it or not, there are playoff implications tonight for the Detroit Red Wings. So, Nathan, how are you doing tonight? Well, I'm uh, feeling pretty excited for this uh, game against the Detroit Red Wings. It's uh, going to be an entertaining night, I think, uh, for the Eastern Conference. Uh... Home and home. Uh both of these teams faced off against each other last night in kind of a crazy game. We'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, for those that uh, might not already know, make sure that uh, you head over to check out all of our content over on THN.com slash Montreal. That's the hockey news for the Montreal Canadiens. We already have a pregame preview, so make sure you log on and check that out as we approach the game in just a few minutes here. Also, make sure that you follow us on all of our social media, just at Rocket Sports on Twitter at Rocket Sports Media Inc. on Facebook, at Rocket Sports Media on Instagram, and check out our weekly podcast, the Canadians Connection podcast, at canadiansconnection.fm or on any of your favorite streaming platforms. Also, we just put out a brand new episode yesterday on this YouTube channel, so make sure after this live stream you can check out all the great content on this channel. Hit subscribe if you like what you saw. A like's going to go a long way in helping us out, and uh, we'd also appreciate if you get into our live chat. Uh, we have a live chat here on the stream, so if you're not already on a mobile device like a tablet, phone, or laptop, make sure you pick one up, uh, log into YouTube on there, join us on the stream there too, and you'll be able to join that live chat. I know some of our viewers watch on a TV app, but uh, you'll want to make sure that you grab a mobile device so that you can uh, talk to us along the way here. We appreciate all the comments uh, as we watch this game. Uh, we'll start things off with a Rocket Sports roll call. Where are you watching tonight? Uh, let us know in the chat, as we know we have Habs fans and hockey fans from everywhere around the world. So, Nathan, as the final game of the season is tonight, can you tee this one up for me? How important is this for both teams? Well, I think uh, for the Detroit Red Wings, it's a, a must-win situation for them. Uh, you know, like uh, we all know, there's a tight race in the Eastern Conference for the final playoff spot. And for the Montreal Canadiens, I think it's just for... Uh, either for the Habs to either play spoiler or to, you know, pad their own personal stats for themselves, but uh, a good game for some of the younger players uh, for Montreal to get some uh, needed NHL time. For sure. We'll get to rosters in just a couple seconds here. But uh, as you mentioned, for the Montreal Canadiens, and I feel like for Habs fans, this might be a difficult one tonight. Either you want to play spoiler or you're looking for that uh, <laughs> higher percentage at uh, – at the draft lottery you want to get to in a better position there so maybe you don't want to win this one we'd love to hear from everyone what their thoughts are but personally i'm predicting tonight a detroit red wings loss i think they're going to lose three to two and miss the playoffs what do you think about that nathan you know what uh I, i'm gonna agree with you on this one michael i think uh the detroit red wings are going to lose tonight and i think the final score is going to be uh a you know, a one goal difference is going to be a 5-4 win for Montreal in regu uh, regulation. So it's uh, going to be the, the dagger for uh, the Detroit Red Wings. For sure. So let us know your score predictions. We'll take those up until the end of the game. Who do you think is going to win? And we want to hear your final score. Let us know in that live chat. And uh, just once again, uh, for those that might have missed it, make sure you pick up a mobile device here, laptop, tablet, cell phone, log on to YouTube there, and you'll be able to find the uh, live chat just on the left side there. And we appreciate all of you joining us tonight as the Montreal Canadiens take on the Detroit Red Wings and Nathan. Uh, as both of those teams played last night, the Montreal Canadiens blew a 4-1 to lead and lost in overtime. The Troy Red Wings win 5-4, to two goals from JT Comfort, two goals from Lucas Raymond, including the tying goal and the winner. Um, what happened here? Like, what happened to these Montreal Canadiens? Well, you know, in the first period, they looked uh, they looked pretty good, you know, being able to score uh, a couple goals there in the first field to uh, get into a lead. Uh, but I think the, the biggest issue for the Montreal Canadiens, what happened is, is that, um, you know, halfway through that second period, I felt that the Detroit Red Wings, uh, you know, picked it up and didn't look back, uh, you know, being able to 
uh, minimize Montreal's chances in the offensive zone and bolstering their their chances in there in the Montreal's defensive zone. So I think uh, it was just a whole, you know, I think Detroit Red Wings picked up their uh, socks a little bit and uh, they just took over. Um, and Montreal did not have any kind of answer uh, back from from the Detroit Red Wings. For sure. And I think one of the issues that came up for uh, the Montreal Canadiens last night is they're playing against a very desperate team. As we said, there are some playoff implications here. Detroit, definitely, this is a must win tonight. Um, Do you think that Montreal maybe just doesn't have it in them? Or do you think that uh, they're going to be fully engaged and looking for a win today? Uh, I think I think tonight they're going to they're going to come back with some a little bit of revenge here. I'm sure that, you know, they they feel that they could have won that game last night knowing they're up 4-1. So I think their their attitude towards tonight's game uh, is going to be a little bit of a payback, but also I, I, I'm a firm believer it's going to be a spoiler night for the, for the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, I would appreciate if that happened. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, get to our starting goaltenders uh, just a few minutes away from puck drop here. But starting in net for the Montreal Canadiens is Caden Primo. And for the Detroit Red Wings, you get James Reimer. It was Alex Lyon against Sam Montembeau last night. Uh, what can you tell us about these two goaltenders? Uh, you know, uh, uh, James Reimer and Kane Primo, um, you know, haven't had too many starts this season uh, uh, for for themselves. But, uh, you know, respectively have, you know, done pretty well in, in that area. Uh, James Reimer going 10-8-2 and two with a 307 goals against average and a 905 save percentage. And Kane Primo uh, this year is eight nine and two, uh, two nine five uh, goals against a nine ten save percentage. So I think for these two goaltenders, it's uh, going to be uh, pretty big for uh, James Reimer to um, you know really play at his best game. Um, but also, it's going to be important too for Caden Primo as well. I think uh, being able to play against a team that's desperate um, and being able to show you know you can put up a win against him uh, would be very good for his uh, confidence and and his. Uh, ongoing development uh, in the NHL. Yeah, for sure. W- with James Reimer, of course, you get the veteran in there. Uh, he's He's got some experience in desperate games like this, but uh, as a former Leaf, we've seen him, uh, well, lose in a, uh, when his team was up 4-1 to one in a Game 7, so maybe the pressure could get to him tonight. If you're Caden Primo, of course, you're playing uh, to try and get to uh, Try and put your name in the conversation for the starter next season. So maybe a little bit more to play for when it comes to Caden Primo. Uh, I'm excited to see what he can do tonight. And uh, yeah, for James Reimer, I know he's the type of goaltender that tends to play well when he has a lot of shots against them. And Montreal last night did not take a lot of shots. So maybe that works in their favor. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Michael. <laughs> So AB chimes into the chat here. Uh, my score prediction tonight, Detroit wins four to three. So another one goal game. And Amy, is that going to be an overtime win? Please let us know in the chat. And just a little reminder, let us know all your score predictions in the chat for tonight's game. And the puck has dropped. And here we go. Very important game for the Detroit Red Wings tonight. I'm excited to see it. And Montreal, pretty early on, getting some zone time here. Uh, It'll be a little bit short-lived as uh, the Detroit Red Wings are trying to get the puck out. Montreal actually gets a shot from the point there. Kind of a weak one turned aside by Reimer. And they hold the zone with Matheson's air. But a giveaway. Detroit coming the other way. A three-on-two rush here. And they can't get a shot on that. Bit of a scramble and a bouncing puck in front of the Montreal defender, but they get it out to safety here. So Montreal showing a little bit of energy and a bad kip away from Mike Matheson. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, you know, Mike Matheson's got to watch out with those uh, giveaways, especially tonight for a team that's, you know, fighting for the playoffs lives. For sure. And as James Reimer covers up an easy puck there, uh, just some lineup notes uh, for the Montreal Canadiens. Your scratches are Colin White, Yessa Ulanen, Jonathan Kovacevic, and Jordan Harris. Uh, Lane Hudson and Logan Mayu, who was called up today, will draw into the lineup. So excited to see them. Hudson played last night and picked up one assist, his first NHL point in his first NHL game. So very excited to see what he could do tonight. Yeah, it was exciting to see uh, this young guy on the ice and looking forward to, like you said, uh, seeing both these uh, uh, gentlemen play play tonight for the Habs. A little bit of zone time for the Habs, but not getting a whole lot going for themselves as the Detroit Red Wings clear it all the way down the ice and they'll come back to pick it up. There's Hudson 
and Montreal will break it through center. Looking for an opportunity. Cross ice pass from Suzuki misses, but Montreal hangs onto the puck here. Now Hudson there at the point, dangling around, showing off his skating and his stick handling. He'll pass it off, and Montreal's looking for some opportunity before Caulfield gives that one away. But Montreal will hang on to it. Slavkovsky with a pass and a shot and a miss. Great opportunity there, but could not hit the net. Slavkovsky showing his strength and his long reach on that one. Now Primo out to play the puck, and Montreal sends the puck down to the other end here, coming through center ice. They'll chip it in and go off on a bit of a line change. What a chance there by Uri Slavkovsky. <laughs> Could not finish. Wow. It, I, I thought for sure, you know, with the defenseman not having a stick, and it was almost like pretty much a two-on-0 oh, because a guy without a stick can't do much, and it was just... Not, and not Primo good. with a couple of saves there right <laughs> in front. So some scoring chances early on, but an inability to finish. I think the second shot of the rebound actually missed the net. Yeah, it's uh, definitely... I think a little bit of nerves going on right now at the beginning of this game. <laughs> For sure. Amy chimes in with, wow, the head fake from Hudson at the blue line to deke around. Yeah, that was a great play. Hudson really showing off so far in this one. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that one for sure. So in the Montreal zone here, it looks like Detroit's going to get to the puck first. But not for long as Montreal heads the other way. They'll dump it in. That's uh, Tanner Pearson going for the dump and chase. He can't get to it first, but Montreal will get there eventually. Now at the point, Matheson showing off a little spinorama. Now Logan Mayu out there with a nice pass. Back to Matheson. Shot stopped right on by James Reimer. Canadians Connection chimes in with quite a buzz in the Bell Center. And if you're a Habs fan watching tonight, there's certainly plenty to watch for with two young blue liners in the lineup. Uh, Logan Mayu making his debut uh, in the NHL after being called up uh, just, uh, I believe it was late last night or early this morning. And then Lane Hudson, who made his NHL debut yesterday, he's making his Bell Center debut tonight and uh, certainly uh, showing off a little bit so far. Yeah, I, I, I do like, uh, Amy brought it up, but like I do like that fake, you know, that he's been doing uh, the last couple of games. You see him just do that head fake and try to use his speed. It's it's good to see. Certainly. Like I said, showing off, I think. And uh, the Montreal <laughs> Canadiens here uh, at center trying to get the puck back into the offensive zone. They'll send it around the boards here. Now it's behind the net. And it looks like Detroit's going to come away with it, sending it down a long lead pass. That goes past the blue line now to Brinkett's in the offensive zone looking for his options, but he gets muscled off the puck. But Detroit's going to hang on to it and cycle it. They dump it back in. And a hit behind the net by Matheson. Detroit's hanging on to the puck here, but not for long. Montreal picks it up, and they'll dump and chase. Go off on a little bit of a change here. But... Uh, Kind of an exciting game so far, although not a whole lot has happened. A couple of scoring chances, and you're starting to see some skill from the young players on Montreal, which is always appreciated. Of course, Slavkovsky with a chance pretty early on in this one that uh, he couldn't hit the net, unfortunately. It looked pretty wide open. And then, of course, uh, Lane Hudson that we've talked about. Logan Mayu, of course, getting engaged physically, too. So I think uh, I'm excited, and uh, I'm happy with what I've seen from these Montreal Canadiens. They get a shot on net. That one, it looks like it may have gone off of Weimer, Reimer and wide. Now looking for another opportunity. Montreal with a blatant giveaway in the zone, but they managed to hang on. Now Suzuki passes it to the point. That's Hudson out there. Back to Suzuki and Hudson pinching in with a pass in front. Can't connect Detroit with a nice defensive play. Okay. Amy's in the chat once again, Slavkovsky, with hands of stone on that one. <laughs> LOL. That's true. <laughs> and it looks like we have a Wings fan in the chat. Sage Roberts chimes in with Let's Go Wings. Hockey Town is back. We appreciate fans of all different teams. Uh, so let us know who you're cheering for. And uh, if you're just joining us, we want to hear your score predictions. Let us know in the chat and uh, we'll read that out. And give you a shout out down below. Shot and a save by Caden Primo. And we'll get a whistle here, looking for a face-off. 
Just to continue along uh, with some lineup notes here, uh, of course, uh, Caden Gooley is day-to-day, as well as Arbor Jackai, who got uh, can- who got shut down for the season, and Joshua Waugh still out with an injury. For the Detroit Red Wings, uh, Billy Husso and Michael Rasmussen is out uh, with injuries, so lots of injuries on both sides, but uh, so far, uh, exciting game to watch. Yeah, I really like uh, how, how this game is uh, looking and, uh, you know, just the little bits of excitement you can watch from certain players and and then, uh, you know, just obviously seeing a uh, little bit of a miscommunication with some with both teams on the ice, but uh, they're both, I think, they're finding their game now. Of course. And it looks like we have some Wings fans in the chat. Jake chimes in with Wings 6-3, to three, so continue sending in those score predictions. We got Brendan chiming in with a 5-2 to two Wings win. A big hit behind the net uh, for the Montreal Canadiens is now they're heading the other way here into the offensive zone. New hook with a giveaway. That one goes directly to Detroit. Detroit currently leading shots four to two. We have Randy who chimes in with a go Habs go. Lane Hudson is going to be a star, and I sure hope so. <laughs> Randy also chimes in with a six to four Habs victory. That's something that I'm hoping for as well. <laughs> So appreciate those bold predictions. And uh, like I said, let us know in the chat what you think the final score will be. As Montreal is back in the offensive zone and they're going to cycle this one around, they can't get to it first. And now Detroit's coming the other way with speed. Shot, that one can't connect in front and goes completely wide. Detroit's going to hang on to it a bit here. They keep it in the offensive zone. And a wrister from the point stopped by Caden Primo question coming in from uh, randy randy says are you guys based in montreal well i personally am based in montreal but uh nathan i know you're uh, over in ontario yeah i'm, uh, I'm from uh, 40 year ontario just outside of niagara falls um close to buffalo new york so <laughs> so i think on that note uh, we'll uh, throw it up again give us uh, a rocket sports roll call where are you watching from tonight leave your answer in the chat hockey fans coming from everywhere and Sage chimes in with uh, much love for Canada. My pop side of the family is uh, from Newfoundland. So, yeah, the Newfoundland, that's uh, it's pretty far out east there. That's a nice place, though. <laughs> Haven't uh, gotten all the way out there. Jake chimes in saying from Michigan. So, of course, uh, the Detroit fan from Michigan makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I think uh, as this game heads into the first commercial break, uh, I think it's a good time to get to our players to watch and our player to watch out for. So on the Detroit Red Wings, who are you watching out for? Well, uh, for the Detroit Red Wings, I'm looking out for Lucas Raymond. Uh, in his last five games, his forwards had six goals and four assists for 10 points. Uh, last night's uh, game against the Canadians, I'm sure if we all watched, or if you watched that game, you watched him score the tying goal and the game-winning goal. Um, so I think uh, for uh, the Habs, I think they really got to pay attention, not only just to Lucas Raymond, but the rest of the team, but pay attention to him. He seemed to have the hot hand last game and uh, looking to see what else he can do tonight for the Red Wings. For sure. I have my eyes on JT Confer scoring two goals last night to cut uh, two Habs leads in half. Uh, I think uh, he's, a, he's a veteran. He's got a Stanley Cup under his ring. Uh, he won it in uh, 2022 with the Avalanche. So I think he's going to play a big role in tonight's game. And who for the Habs do you have your eyes on? Um, I, I I had two people, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick out uh, I'm gonna pick out Logan Mayu. Um, it's uh, it's his first game in the NHL. Uh, he's uh, you know played 70 games in Laval, uh, had 47 points. Uh, he's he's played good for a rookie defenseman in the AHL, and uh, I, I think you know this call up is well deserved. And it's um, I, I want to be able to see uh, what Logan Mayu can do at the NHL level. Uh, so he can uh, definitely be a dif- difference maker for the Habs tonight. For sure. And I have my eyes on Caden Primo. The Habs were outshot 35-21 to 21, uh, against the Wings last night. I think the Wings are going to be quite desperate tonight. And I think Primo is the one that has uh, the ability just to say no and shut the door. So we'll be looking out uh, on these two players throughout the night as the puck gets dropped once again. And Detroit in the offensive zone. Looks like a pile up behind Primo's net with a couple uh, of the players there. And a shot. Primo stops it with a blocker. Now Montreal's going to come the other way. They get it out just to center here. They're carrying it very slow. Suzuki there out to Caulfield. 
Now looking for the trailer, looking for something, looking for a shot. That one gets stopped by a rhymer right on. So Montreal, after kind of a scary moment, uh, takes it the other way. And uh, I believe that was Struble with the shot. So good sequence there from both teams exchanging some chances. Yeah, I've, uh, I've noticed there's points now in this first period that uh, Slavkovsky is getting uh, double teamed by a couple of Detroit players that are take, really taking him down the ice and giving him a couple extra cross checks. I wonder uh, if that's something from uh, last night's game that they're trying to even out the score. For sure. As we wait for puck drop, Randy says, Nathan, uh, glad, you on, glad you Ontarians jumped to the dark side. Go Habs, go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. To, I'm a proud uh, Montreal Canadiens fan, but you know, when you come live in Ontario, you gotta either on uh, Toronto Maple Leaf fans or Ottawa fans. So <laughs> I'm quite surrounded. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, there are quite a few uh, Montreal fans everywhere. So we appreciate uh, you all letting us know. Uh, but the uh, Montreal Canadiens now looking to get the puck in their own zone as Detroit comes the other way. We'll bring this one around the boards here. Shot at the point. Now they'll pass it off, sending it behind the net, right all alone behind the net, looking for a wraparound stop by Primo with a nice poke check. And Montreal headed back the other way now, looking for something off the rush, but they can't connect on the pass. Now Detroit comes away with it, and it was a loose puck wide open for the taking, and they'll come the other way here. They dump it directly onto the Montreal defender's stick, and they'll try to come back. A little bit too much from Yoel Armia trying to dangle around everyone, but he can't get it through. Now Detroit comes the other way before they cough it up, and now Montreal has the puck heading through the offensive zone. Armia with a pass and a light shot stopped by Reimer. Now the Detroit Red Wings heading the other way. Montreal's getting a few shots, but nothing to really note for. And Detroit with a almost partial breakaway there. That one completely misses. Oh. So it's some exciting hockey, but uh, nothing that seems overly threatening. I think <laughs> some uh, missed nets there, some weak shots. Both goalies probably uh, looking a little bit better than they really should. Yeah, and, and I, I feel like, like, like you know, like you're saying, like weak shots, and you know, like it just. It, I think there's a lot of um, jitters. I think happening right now. I don't. I don't think. I think players are getting a little too excited, or they're nervous. Like I don't know what's going on right now. It's. It's not. Uh, Exciting, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit scrambly in this uh, first period, that's for sure. And just want to pull up this chat here coming from Jake. Maple Leafs will win it all, though. And uh, yeah, I'll believe it when it happens, Jake. I'm sorry. They're in the playoffs, at least. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> now, Matheson coming up the ice through center. That one does not connect, and Detroit's coming the other way very quickly here to try and get set up. Now Matheson, once again, he'll try it again. He can't get it through the Detroit forwards. Now Mayu's going to try to, but he gets hit. Montreal cannot get the puck out of their zone with a clean pass. Finally, they do. And a nice uh, stop there by Petrie being aggressive in the neutral zone right at the red line. And a yeah. big hit now just at the blue line. Oh, Caulfield with a nice hit too. Yeah. <laughs> big one. <laughs> Just off screen, unfortunately. But uh, Detroit now trying to get the puck in the offensive zone. It looks like Lane Hudson's right up there in the middle of uh, this battle along the boards. But Detroit's going to come away with it. Hudson's going to have to get back pretty quickly. But Montreal will hang on to it, try to send it back up. Josh Anderson can't dump it in. Detroit comes the other way now. Now Montreal rolling out there with uh, their bottom sit with their uh, bottom line with Harvey Pernard and now Detroit's going to come away with it so a little bit of back and forth here lots of missed passes by Montreal this is yeah this is not a great look they're going to if that keeps up they're going to have some regrets throughout the game yeah I think uh, not a good showing by that third line for the Montreal Canadiens uh, I think they might want to maybe either step up or maybe make some changes on that line maybe yeah, for sure. And now there's a race for the puck behind the Montreal net. Raymond's in there, your player to watch. He passes over to Debrinket, but Montreal fends him off. Detroit's going to hang on to the puck, though. They have possession. Trying to center it in front, but Primo's not going to take any chances. And he'll cover that one up. 
So both teams, like I said, exchanging their chances. Shots eight to six for the Detroit Red Wings as we head into the next commercial break. But uh, it's it's been entertaining yet sloppy so far. I think uh, <laughs> both coaches are going to have some things to say about this. Yeah, I agree with you on that. You know, just missed passes, uh, fanning on passes. You know, missed shot attempts. Sometimes uh, being out of position. There's just there's a lot of things they want to probably uh, talk about, like you said, over the the intermission. For sure. So for tonight's mission, the keys to the game for both teams, uh, what are you looking to see from the Montreal Canadiens? Well, the Montreal Canadiens, you know, last night uh, when, when they played the Red Wings, they, they had a good first uh, half of the game, I'd say. You know, they were up, uh, they were up uh, four, four to one at one point in the game. And, you know, to be honest, uh, in order for them to win tonight, they got to continue on with that that pressure. Um, you know, the second half of the game, they kind of just fell to the Red Wings come back and, and they did eventually come back and, and beat them. So if Montreal can play a full 60 and, and do what they did in the first period of last night's game throughout the whole game, it's going to be a, a win for them. For sure. For me, I want to see that top line going for the Habs. They've had uh, at least one chance from Slavkovsky, but Suzuki, Caulfield, and Slavkovsky were very quiet last night. They did not get any points on the board. I want to see them being contributors. When these three uh, players are rolling, they make it difficult for the other team to be able to play their mm-hmm. game. So looking for them to get to going a little bit more here. Uh, for the Detroit Red Wings, what is their key to tonight's victory? Well, it's they got to play the way they played uh, last night in that second, third period. Uh, they got to play with some fight. They got to play with like uh, some "I want to win" attitude, um, and they got to play that for the whole game. Because um, like they're if they how they play tonight is going to be their their decision on on the playoffs for the rest of their season, right? So if they cannot fight and claw and and continue to battle, there it's it's going to be a, a, a losing game for them. For sure. And for the Red Wings, I think they need to shoot everything towards Primo. Primo is a goalie who has a strong first two periods, but he struggles to close out games. Uh, He's a young guy, so they're going to want to throw everything his way. As uh, back to the game here, Detroit wins the faceoff in the offensive zone. Montreal has possession there. Gallagher is trying to battle along the boards, but he loses it. They ring the puck around behind the net. Montreal trying to get the puck out. They manage to get it past the blue line. And Gallagher with a nice setup, and the Montreal Canadiens score the opening goal. Great feed from one uh, <laughs> Brendan Gallagher. <laughs> wow. What a goal. <laughs> Two on one, and they managed to find the back of the net. Wow, that, that Brendan Gallagher's looked good the last, you know, three, four games that he's played this season. Good Getting skating. On the score sheet. Yeah. He, that's probably the best skating I've seen from Gallagher in a long time. And Montreal, the, it's going to come from Alex Newhook finishing. Cross yeah. ice pass, Detroit <laughs> with kind of a breakdown. Lots of Detroit players not involved in that play whatsoever. Yeah, it's uh, wow. I, I I just I love I love the you know the passing to get to where they were and the, the completion by Newhook. Just a good good overall play. For sure. So there you go. Montreal up one nothing in this one. Amy says beauty pass from Gallagher. And that's exactly it. Nice to see Gallagher more involved. He scored a couple goals last night too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's been look, looking great, I think. <laughs> for yeah, for an older uh, veteran. For sure. So Montreal with the lead here off a of two on one. Behind the net, the Detroit Red Wings are going to try to break out the puck here. They get a pass center, controlling it at the blue line. Primo out to play the puck. He backhands it into the corner, and Montreal now has possession. Canadians Connection chimes in with first career point for Logan Mayu. So he gets an assist on that one. Uh, Randy N. just before that, pointing that out. Logan Mayu gets his first point. So... Very happy for Logan Mayu and his NHL debut to get an assist, just like uh, Lane Hudson did last night. Yeah, and surprisingly, they both came in the first period. Yeah, that's exactly it. So (laughs) trying to one-up each other. (laughs) Well, I I think Hudson takes the cake on that one. I think it was his second shift he got his first NHL point. (laughs) Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) But uh, nonetheless, happy for both of these players and defensemen nonetheless getting involved uh, offensively. 
But you know what? With that last goal, I, I'm going to say it again. That was all Brendan Gallagher. <laughs> like, Yo. battle along the boards, coming away with the puck, going up with speed. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely, definitely all Brendan Gallagher with all that. And Alex Newhook, a stat, he uh, finally scores his first goal against the Red Wings. Before uh, this nice. game, he went, he had uh, four four assists for four points in uh, in all the games he's played against the Red Wings. So now he's uh, up his total up to five points against the Red Wings. Perfect. So congrats to Alex Newhook there, hitting lots of milestones today. As uh, Detroit's now with a giveaway, a shot gets blocked by Montreal. Uh, glorious opportunity for the Canadians to get a shot off, but unfortunately that one goes right into the skates of the Detroit defender. The puck goes all the way to the other end, but Montreal's going to try to get it back into the offensive zone here quickly. Lots of Red Wings in the chat today. Jonathan joins us with a Let's Go Red Wings. So very important night for the Wings, and they're down one nothing so far in this first period. Uh, I think the Red Wings are going to want to do a quick pushback and almost a giveaway by Primo directly to Dylan Larkin. Hey, now the, the puck him. yeah, <laughs> terrible play by Primo there, and now the Red Wings have some zone time. Montreal being very aggressive and taking a tumble behind the net, almost coughing up the puck yet again. Slap shot from the point, stopped by Primo. So no harm done there, but a couple of good opportunities for the Red Wings off of that Caden Primo giveaway. Yeah, and, and I'm wondering, is there like a hole in the ice over there? That's the third Montreal Canadiens player I've seen fall behind the net already <laughs> in the first period. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, not too long ago, the NHLPA uh, did a survey, and uh, the uh, Bell Center was named uh, the rink with the best ice, according to the players. So I'd hope not. That would certainly damage their re <laughs> reputation if there was a little hole there. Uh, yeah. But hey, uh, maybe they'll work on it as uh, we head into another commercial break. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said here, I I'm happy to see the Montreal Canadiens up one nothing here. But if you're Detroit, you're thinking about last night when uh, you uh, were down 4-1 to one and still managed to come from behind and win it in overtime. So... Uh, does that change your opinion about this Montreal lead at all? Uh, well, so, we have to wait the rest of this period, I think. I think uh, we'll give the Red Wings kind of, you know, the whole first period to kind of figure out what they need to do. But if they don't start seeing things changing, then they, they need to, uh, they'll need to start making adjustments. For sure. Uh, so just a little update on Alex Newhook, he's ties his career high in goals and his career high in points after that goal that he just scored. 14 goals is his career high, 33 points. So a uh, big congrats to him on that one. Uh, if he can get another point, that will be his career high overall. But uh, 33 points for one Alex Newhook in 54 games. That's a pretty good uh, way to start your career with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, certainly some much needed offense there. Yeah, it's uh, de definitely a good way, especially, you know, for a young young forward like he is, you know, trying to, I don't want to say reestablish his game, but, you know, try to pick up where he started when he first came into the NHL. Um, but, yeah, good, good for Alex Newhook on uh, getting a goal tonight. For sure. And we have a couple milestones that we're kind of keeping an eye on today. Uh, the first one is, well, when you think about Cole Caulfield, who do you compare him to? Alex DeBrincat, right? Both <laughs> yeah. tied in goals right now, 27 apiece. And if one of them could score more goals than the other tonight, they're going to be the one uh, who wins, uh, I guess, uh, that 1v1 competition uh, for the most goals between those two. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good, good little battle between the two because they're both uh, known to score goals. And I think this year both those players were looked to you know, be a little bit higher in the goal totals than what they are now, but... Um, nevertheless, they are tied, and we'll see who will get that next goal. So Montreal in the offensive zone, a shot that looked kind of tricky, ends up uh, dribbling behind the net, and now Detroit coming the other way. 5.20 to go, and uh, Montreal with a big hit, uh, preventing Detroit to, from leaving uh, their own zone on a number of occasions here. Uh, finally, Detroit manages to get the puck out and into the offensive zone, but I like this aggression from the Montreal Canadiens, not holding back from throwing that body around. Yeah, and it, it's coming from their top line. That's the second big hit I've seen Cole Caulfield this period make on a Detroit Red Wings player. It's uh, definitely playing differently without the puck tonight. For sure. And the Montreal Canadiens coming through the offensive zone here. 
pass in front that unfortunately can't connect but great opportunity once again and another shot right in front of Reimer some scrum in front of Reimer now but good save there Montreal uh, it seems like they have a set play trying to go cross ice with the pass right in front of Reimer they it worked that one time on the new hook goal but they've tried it a few times and it's not uh, connected yeah, I think there might be uh, implications of video replay that we're uh, watching some video on Detroit Red Wings tonight. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And so far, they're getting lots of glorious opportunities. It's just looking for the right tip. I think Detroit's defended it pretty well so far, with the exception of the two-on-one. Yeah, and, and then I love to see you know Gallagher in front of that net still causing havoc for the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> for sure. And Primo checks this puck into the corner. And Logan Mayu is going to look for an opening pass here. Trying to get, get it past the blue line. He does barely, but this time Detroit comes away with the puck. And they'll dump it in right to Primo. We'll try this again as Matheson tries to send, up, send it up the ice. That pass does not connect. Armia tries to pass it. And Montreal finally exits the zone and they connect on a pass. Matheson with a pass. And that one can't get through. Now Detroit coming the other way, but uh, Montreal stops them up. Amy chimes into the chat. How soon will the Red Wings start shooting at Primo's glove side? And uh, I, I guess if, they do, if they've done their homework, they will have already done that. But <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Uh, Detroit with not uh, too many dangerous opportunities so far. Maybe once uh, they start to get those coming, then uh, we'll start to see them shoot glove side. We'll keep an eye on that for sure. Just a few minutes left uh, in uh, this uh, first period. Uh, three minutes and 38 to go. Uh, Detroit leading shots 10 to 8 so far, despite being down 1 0. And just a little programming note for everyone uh, as soon as this period comes to an end, we'll take a three minute break and then we actually have an intermission show. So make sure you stick around for that. Uh, Make sure uh, you send in some uh, questions and comments about the game as well. We enjoy interacting with each and every one of you. Canadians Connection chimes in with good to see Matheson grab the puck from Mayu's first NHL point. So nice to see that from Matheson, the veteran. And of course, uh, Mayu's going to hang on to that for uh, pretty much a lifetime. That's a uh, <laughs> big congrats to him. And that puck goes up and over the boards. 3.05 left in this period. And it's been a quick one so far. Not too many whistles uh, up until the last couple minutes here. Uh I think that uh, Detroit, I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, the response to that first goal, they've had a little bit of zone time, but they can't seem to uh, crack this Montreal defense whatsoever. Yeah, and it's, uh, they're, uh, I see that they're trying to go behind the net a lot, trying to, you know, play that behind the net game, but, you know, it's it's just not working out for them. Montreal's clogging up all those avenues, um, but we'll see, you know, like yesterday, yeah, yesterday's game, they didn't really look that good after the first, after the first period too, so maybe they need a good yelling from their coach and, I don't know, shape up in a section. <laughs> Amy chimes in for those uh, watching other scores. Caps versus Flyers is still 0 0. And during the intermission, we'll talk about all the possible playoff outcomes as best as we can tonight. Uh, it gets a little bit complicated with uh, all the tiebreakers, but we'll do our best to lay it out for you uh, <laughs> during this first intermission. And the puck uh, dribbles out of the zone. Detroit's going to try to send it back and uh, set back up. But Montreal being quite aggressive with the body and the stick here. They're going to try to come the other way. But another errored pass goes right to the Detroit defender. Now Detroit gets to the puck first. Sending it around the boards directly to Montreal. And they'll try to come up ice once again. But again, cannot connect on the pass. Detroit comes back. So both teams with some errored passes here. Logan Mayu is going to try to send this one up. Matheson sends it up directly to Detroit once again. So that's three in a row where Montreal cannot get past that red line. Now Matheson's going to pick up the puck, and we'll see what happens here. But, uh, yeah, something's not clicking uh, with these uh, defenders on Montreal. And uh, now Detroit's going to have some more zone time after all of that. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know what's going on right now. I think uh, maybe Madison's on the wrong side. Maybe like uh, I don't really know what's uh, happening right now. But too many pucks going over to Detroit right now, <laughs> for sure. And uh, just a little bit over a minute and a half to go in this uh, first period. Uh, Montreal tries to send that one up. Savard with an aired pass, shot for the point, and it's Cider with the goal. More at Cider. 
ties this one up for the Detroit Red Wings. Goes directly through one Caden Primo. I... Ouch. So, uh, game he says, it's a tie game. And it's going to go into that first intermission tied one-to-one. Uh, yeah, uh, just too many giveaways from the Montreal Canadiens <laughs> and an inability to exit that uh, uh, defensive zone. So... There you go, Detroit with the, that, I think, a well-earned uh, first goal to tie this one up. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. It wasn't just one line of defense. It was two lines of defense that were having troubles getting that puck out of uh, their zone, and it cost uh, Montreal a goal. It's uh, unfortunate, but that's how yeah. sometimes that's how, she, that's how, that's how it uh, goes sometimes. For sure. So it looks like we're probably going into the first intermission with a tie. Uh, Detroit Red Wings fans are going to be happy about that one as uh, they have been out shooting the Montreal Canadiens, but it certainly has looked like a struggle for them to get uh, good uh, offensive opportunities. Yes. No, it's a, uh, it's a good, a good, good uh, goal for the Detroit Red Wings. And uh, did you know that the Detroit Red Wings are 13, seven and four against Atlantic teams this season? Oof. So uh, that's, that's a positive pretty good stat for him. It's yeah, a positive stat for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a kind of, a, I guess, a weaker Atlantic Division towards the bottom there. But uh, you know, that's that bodes well for them, uh, especially if there's playoff implications here. So we'll see how the rest of this game goes. <laughs> <laughs> so Caden Primo out to play the puck. Uh, just about thirty seconds to go in this period. Mike Matheson passes this one up and doesn't connect to anyone, and it'll go behind the Detroit net. So Montreal just trying to hold the zone here, kill some time, less than 20 to go. And just a little reminder here, uh, once that clock hits zero, we're going to take a three-minute break, but we'll be right back for an intermission show. And we'll uh, talk about uh, this playoff race and some of the things to look forward to for both teams. So crazy game in this first period. A shot there right at the end. And Primo stops that one. The buzzer goes. So a close one there. But this one goes to zero. Uh, One to one is the score. Like I said, we'll take a quick break. And uh, we'll be right back with you in a couple of minutes.
Welcome back, everybody, to our live stream watch along as the Habs are taking on the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, I'm Nathan, a proud contributor of the Rocket Sports Media, and I'm here with my Rocket Sports Media colleague, Michael, who also is the host of the Canadians Connection podcast. Uh, how are you doing? How, how was that period for you, Michael? That was a fun one to watch. Lots of drama for sure. Just a little recap here, and this comes in from at Rocket Sports on Twitter. That's Rick Stevens or Rocket Sports. Uh, shots on goal, 12 to 8 for the Detroit Red Wings in that period. Habs and Wings tied 1 to 1. New Hook with his 15th goal of the season uh, for the Montreal Canadiens and first career NHL assist from uh, Logan Mayu coming the other way uh, for the Detroit Red Wings. It was Moritz Sider with an assist from Dylan Larkin. So, certainly uh, a dramatic period. And uh, I'm kind of happy to see both teams get a goal on the board. Uh, although, uh, you know, some playoff implications here. I wouldn't mind that seeing the Habs play a little bit more spoiler here. <laughs> I agree with you on the spoiler part. I just, it's so such a tight race in that Eastern Conference and someone's got to be spoiled. <laughs> For sure. Uh, so just a little uh, recap of where you can find all of our content. You can find everything at THN.com slash Montreal. That's the hockey news for Montreal. Uh, of course, you'll be able to find all our game day content, game previews. After the game, you'll find a uh, game recap for this one. Uh, we also cover Laval Rocket, Trois Rivier Alliance, feature articles as well. So make sure you check all that out. Give us a follow on all of our social media at Rocket Sports on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Plus, check out our weekly podcast, Canadians Connection, at canadiansconnection.fm or on any of your favorite streaming platforms. And make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any one of those episodes. Just going to take a second here to check up on the chat to see if there's anything happening. Uh, but it seems like we've got some Detroit fans in here. We've got some Habs fans as well. So let us know. Uh, we're still going to be taking your score predictions. Let's uh, hear uh, what you think the final score will be for the end of the game. Um, Nathan, there are playoff implications tonight. Um, if Can you try and lay some of this out? I, I'm looking at a tweet from Frank Saravalli, but it gets complicated. Lots of things could happen, and it's the final game of the season for a lot of different teams. Yeah, so it's uh, it's quite uh, a scenario, that's for sure, on uh, how to explain this. But uh, in, in simplest terms, um, I think Washington has to win out. Uh, Philly has to lose. Um, Detroit has to lose. And then uh, Pittsburgh would automatically be uh, mathematically erased out of their uh, out of the playoff race. Yeah, and uh, just being pointed out here in the chat, uh, Jonathan points out that the Capitals score. So the Capitals are up one nothing against uh, the Philadelphia Flyers right now. Um, for the Capitals to get into the playoffs, any win tonight against Philly or. Uh, one point versus Philly and any Detroit Red Wings loss versus Montreal. And one point uh, against Philly and any Pens loss versus the New York Islanders uh, for Detroit to get into the playoffs. So any win versus Montreal uh, and uh, the Caps earn one point or less versus Philly or uh, one point against Montreal and a regular regulation loss for the Capitals um, and the Pens one point or less. Uh, I could go on a little bit more, but it gets certainly quite com complicated there. I think that lays it out as best as we can here. So essentially, this is a must-win game for the Detroit Red Wings, right? Oh, hundred percent. Like they, like their 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 season lands on this game. If they can't win it, well, you 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 said it, but the best. <laughs> They're done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Detroit, I think a bit of a surprise team to see in the playoff picture pretty early on in the season. Uh, since January, they kind of fell off. Uh, they're still in that conversation. Uh, so good for them. Uh, rebuilding team for a lot of years. Uh, certainly showing that they've taken a step forward. But uh, yeah, it's 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 certainly going to be a nail biter tonight. And we have to kind of wait until all the games are done to really know how things are going to shape out. Yeah, it's uh, definitely we're going to have to be paying attention tonight and tomorrow night. Well, it, we'll see how tonight plays out. But, hey, if uh, certain things happen, you know, it could be up to Pittsburgh wins or loses for a certain team to make playoffs. 
For sure. Uh, we got another score prediction in there. Rick uh, joins the chat and says 3-2 Red Wings. So that's uh, kind of the reverse of what my score is. Uh, so we appreciate that. And uh, continue to let us know what you think the final score will be. Uh, Randy uh, chimes in with a uh, big Habs fan watching from Hamilton, Ontario. So Habs fans from all across the board and cl- uh, all across the globe, rather, including Ontario. And as someone originally from Ottawa, yeah, the Habs fans are everywhere. I remember growing up uh, in like high school, elementary school, the principal was always a Habs fan. So <laughs> you'll you'll find tons of them everywhere. Don't you worry. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan says uh, goaltending has been shaky. I think so. Um, yeah, for that goal against Primo, that seemed to go directly through him, uh, the cider slap shot from the point. I feel like Primo had clear vision on it, but uh, he just it went directly. I don't know if it was five hole or went a little bit high, but uh, yeah, that's certainly one that he would want to have back. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I think uh, when you take a look at that replay or when you uh, take a look at that goal, it's it's one that, uh, you know, as Primo was getting down into the butterfly, I think it just slid right underneath him. He just kind of... You know, didn't didn't project it proper, but you know that's like you said. I think that's definitely one that he wants back. For sure, uh, Rick says uh, thanks for the stream. Uh, why is this on ESPN Plus and not Fox Sports? LOL. <laughs> so we appreciate having you here. This is why we do this so that we can give people some options, and it's a little bit more fun. It's interactive too, so we appreciate that. Um, Talking a little bit more from uh, the Habs perspective, uh, something that's coming up, of course, playoffs are out of the question for the Canadians. They're well out of it. They're eliminated. Um, Something that uh, Habs fans might want to keep an eye on is the World Championship. Normally that takes a bit of a backseat to the NHL playoffs, but it's still fun to look out for. I know that uh, a lot more players might be inclined to try and join the World Championships than they were last year uh, with all uh, like the what was it the four nations uh, battle coming up uh, next season? Yep. Uh, the team Canada is going to be involved in with the uh, USA, uh, Sweden, and Finland. Of course, the Olympics coming up eventually. Um, just based off of speculation, are there any Habs that you think that we will see at this World Championship? Yeah, I actually have a little bit of a list. I think uh, you know for Team Canada, it's going to be Nick Suzuki, Sam Montembeau, and Mike Maths, and all will have a shot at, at playing for Team Canada. Uh, for Team USA, I see Lane Hudson. Caden Primo and Cole Caulfield uh, lining up for uh, Team USA. And then uh, Uri Slavkovsky for uh, Team Slovakia, just to give him some more uh, experience at a, at a, a world level as well. For sure. Um, with Caden Gooley being injured, a tweet came out from Arpin Basu a little bit earlier today uh, saying Caden Gooley confirmed he has suffered a head injury from the hit from Nikita Kucherov just last week. Uh, if he's healthy in time, he said uh, he's been asked to play for Canada at the World Championship and he will go. So that's good to see. I think that would be a big thing for Caden Gooley. And it looks like Canadians Connection also <laughs> agrees with that. Gooley said tonight that uh, uh, he hopes to be healthy enough to join Team Canada for the World Championships. Uh, I think uh, we may as well throw the goalies' names into there, too, with Caden Primo and uh, Samuel Montembeau. Montembeau made an appearance for Team Canada last season. Uh, Caden Primo, I think it would be a big deal for him to get an opportunity. And it, I think that uh, there might be some teams looking for goalies, so certainly an opportunity there. Yoel Armia went last year. I think he has a spot on Finland if he wants it, I think. Just pure speculation anyway. And, of course, it would be great to see uh, Yuri Slavkovsky at uh, a world championship. Um, the reason why he was drafted first overall is because he impressed so much at the Olympics. So it's been a while since uh, we've seen him in an opportunity uh, to do that. So uh, certainly I'd love to see what he could do for uh, one uh, Team Slovakia. Yeah, and it's uh, you know definitely going to be exciting uh, because you know he's, he's grown so much since that first time he's had uh, a world, a world uh, look at the Olympics, right? So it's going to be very interesting to see, uh, you know, what he's been able to develop this year and and kind of continue developing uh, over the summer and going into next year. Uh, looking at the chat here, Randy chimes in with uh, Habs future looks great. Hudson, Mayu, Reinbacher, plus Wa, uh, lots of hope uh, ahead. Uh, finger red number one. So there you go. <laughs> lots of good uh, Montreal Canadiens on the way. And uh, that kind of brings us to something else we wanted to mention. And that's uh, the Laval Rocket. Of course, uh, the playoff hunt is on. They've got two big games coming up 
on the weekend, Friday and Saturday. It's a home and home back to back against the division rival, uh, the Belleville Senators. And of course, we'll have all sorts of coverage on that. So make sure that uh, you check all of it out at uh, thn.com slash Montreal. And uh, plus on this YouTube channel, uh, weekly, uh, you've seen her in the chat, but uh, Amy hosts the Rocket Hockey Report. Uh, so if you want to get all your, of your Laval updates, check it out there. Uh, certainly lots to be excited about and a pretty intense game coming up over the weekend. Yeah, uh, the Laval Rocket do have uh, some intense games over this weekend. And it's uh, if, they, if they don't, uh, you know, Pull their socks together. Their playoff implications might be uh, uh, might be done, right? So they, it's going to be important, like you said. And it's uh, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that's exactly it. I would love to see you know Laval Rocket make it in the playoffs. It, you know, it gives those young prospects something to work towards, and you know, gives them a little bit more um, uh, you know time in in a in a in a high intense uh, area, high intense games uh, to be able to produce and, and get uh, points on the board. Yeah, that's exactly it. And with the Montreal Canadiens, of course, missing the playoffs, I think it'd be nice uh, for the city to have like a little bit more hockey to watch. Of course, there's the World Championships, but it'd be nice to see the Laval Rocket at least get into that play-in round. Uh, and like I said, follow all of our coverage. Uh, the, the next game is going to be Friday, and then again on Saturday, they're going to be both very important and probably the difference between uh, whether or not Laval makes the playoffs. So make sure you check all of that out. Um, since we're talking about some uh, younger players, how about uh, this Lane Hudson making his Habs debut last night, getting an assist? Uh, you mentioned pretty early on in the game. Uh, he's looked pretty confident so far tonight. Uh, he's uh, joining uh, the Montreal Canadiens after he had a pretty great season in the NCAA with Boston U. Uh, he put up 49 points in 38 games. Uh, what have you thought about this uh, uh, Lane Hudson kid so far? Well, I think he's 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 looking pretty good to be honest. I know he's got his you know you mentioned his first point, but the the biggest thing I'm noticing with his game is that he he's doing exactly what he did in in, in the NCAA. He's using his speed and he and he's being able to try to use his head fakes and be shifty with with the puck to try to uh, you know get away from the defenders and be able to make passing lanes or even shoot the puck on net. So. For a young kid to be able to just to go from the NCAA into the uh, an NHL game to make those um, make those things uh, work uh, to the best of his ability, I think is uh, good for that uh, young defenseman. Yeah, absolutely. I think the knock against him has always been his size. Uh, that's supposedly why he uh, fell to the second round in his draft year. But certainly plenty of skill. Uh, you can already see that he has a lot of uh, good skating. Uh, he's got a good IQ, a good offensive touch as well. So I'm very excited. Uh, I think uh, talking about this with Rick Stevens on uh, Canadians Connection over the weekend, uh, you know what, if, if he makes a few bad giveaways in these two games, nothing much to worry about. Uh, it's just exciting to finally have the kid here. And the fact that he's looked pretty good so far, I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, looks really good, and I'm pretty happy with him too as well. Uh, we get uh, Noah chiming in with a three to two Habs victory tonight. Perhaps uh, they're related to you, Nathan. Yes, that's actually my that's my brother Noah. He's actually a Pittsburgh Penguins fan, so I'm uh, secretly rooting for the Penguins to get into the playoffs. But don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Mike Rashel, one of our own uh, Rocket Sports contributors, chimes in with excited to see Tuck and Wi-Fi Junior in Laval. Habs future uh, energy line paired with Beck. So uh, Luke Tuck, of course, uh, was another player that just got signed out of the NCAA. He's going to report to Laval. Um, also uh, with Wi-Fi Junior, that's Florian Jackai, the younger brother of one Arbor, <laughs> who I think a lot of, a lot of Habs fans are a pretty big fan of. Um he, yeah, I was a surprise to see him join uh, the AHL so early on. But you know what? I, I feel like his play, he's kind of like a rumbling bull. So I feel like he might come in and have a pretty good impact. So I agree with everything there from Mike Rashel. Yeah, I agree with everything there from Mike Rashel as well. And honestly, I, I'm just excited to see all these young players that you know we drafted a couple years ago finally starting to see where what direction they're going in. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just uh, out of curiosity too, um, looking at the playoffs, uh, uh, what's the best case for the, uh, Detroit Red Wings? Who would you want them to be uh, playing against? If the Detroit Red Wings made it into the playoffs, the best yeah. case scenario, honestly, I think would be, 
I, well, it would be like a bottom feeder would be like a new like Islanders, but obviously with the way the playoffs goes, that's not going to be, it is uh, the way it's going to go. So, I mean, I think if they had to choose it out of the top teams, I think their best uh, bet would either be like a New York Rangers or uh, a Boston Bruins who both those teams last year uh, did not make it past the first round of the playoffs. So maybe that might uh, be able to play in their favor. For sure. And just uh, coming back to the game in a couple minutes out, out of this intermission, uh, one last thing I will say about the Detroit Red Wings when it comes to the playoffs. I, I feel like the roster is kind of built for the playoffs to an extent, having guys like Andrew Kopp, Ben Sherratt, and whatnot. So <laughs> if they do manage to get in, they might actually be quite exciting to see and certainly would give the Rangers a run for their money, who they're most likely going to end up having to play against. Yeah, and 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 remember, Jeff Petrie and Ben Chirot were both on that 2021 Montreal Canadiens team that made it to the Stanley Cup final. So, and there are big key pieces for that uh, team as well. So, um, I agree with you all your points on there for the Detroit Red Wings. So we'll continue to talk about both teams throughout the game and the next intermission as uh, waiting for the puck to drop here. I uh, just wanted to read this from uh, Rocket Sports. And all summer, uh, there's no offseason for the Rocket Sports channel. We have lots of great content coming every week, all summer long, and even some live streams along the way. So if you haven't already, we'd appreciate it if you tap that subscribe button. Uh, that way you don't miss out on anything. And you can also go as far as to tap the notification bell. That way you're the first to hear about any of our new content. And second period underway, tied one to one. And the Detroit Red Wings are going to try to come in fast here. But Mike Matheson gets to the puck first behind the net. Montreal trying to clear the zone. They've struggled with that a lot in the first period. And we'll see if they can do it here. But nope. Bad giveaway right in the middle of the ice. And a shot goes off. Stopped by Primo. So there you go. I was anticipating that. Every time I see the Montreal Canadiens try and clear the zone, I'm just going to assume that they're giving it away to the Detroit Red Wings here. Yeah, I just, like... Uh, well, I don't even know what to say right now because, like, this is, what, the fourth, fifth, sixth aired pass that just not working for the Montreal Canadiens. So, I mean, they've uh, if they want to give this game to the Detroit, well, just keep making passes like that. Yeah, exactly. And I uh, just wanted to read this from Amy and appreciate the reminder there. And if you're enjoying the stream, uh, it does us a, uh, do us a favor, uh, tap the like button. We'd really appreciate that. And uh, that goes a long way in helping us out. So the Montreal Canadiens trying to come through center here. They dump it into the zone. Reimer taps that one up, but Slavkovsky gets there first. But Slavkovsky has the puck stripped from him right off of his stick. Now behind the net, they're battling for him. Montreal does come away with it here at the point. And Montreal looking for a shot. They get a, a long shot. They can't get through. That one gets blocked. And... <laughs> Caulfield with a one-timer that doesn't go anywhere. That goes into the corner. Now Slavkovsky behind the net. And the Detroit Red Wings finally come away with the puck here, will they? Yeah, they finally get it, and they flip it out to center. Montreal tries to get there first. They do. It doesn't take them very long to get past that blue line. Slavkovsky with a shot. That one gets blocked. Detroit throwing their body in front of all the pucks tonight. And Barron with a shot. That's stopped by Reimer. He can't get to the rebound, and Detroit comes the other way. Almost dangerous is uh, there was that big, juicy rebound in front of Reimer. Yeah, that's uh, don't want to be doing that too many times in the game. We'll capitalize on those chances. For sure. And now behind the net, Gallagher with the puck. He runs that one around, looking for something in front. Shot, stopped by Reimer. Big save and another rebound. Gallagher's on fire. He might have been. I should have begged him for the player to watch. <laughs> Certainly one of the most impactful players so far. But Detroit the other way. They find the trailer on the pass, but that one tri trickles off the stick. Ed <laughs> Edvinson with a shot that goes far. And Montreal heading the other way. Armia comes through center. He can't find a pass. Weak pass attempt there by Armia. And yeah. Detroit's going to come the other way. Can't be doing that. <laughs> yeah, there were like five Detroit Red Wings right there. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> Dump it in if you're past the red line. <laughs> That's exactly right. So now the Detroit Red Wings trying to come the other way here. They shoot into the zone. Detroit a little bit slow to start this one off. 
Montreal with most of the possession. And Montreal actually comes within one shot. Uh, shots are now 12 to 11 for the Red Wings. And that one gets rung around the boards. Detroit's going to get there, but Montreal strips them of the puck. Again, Montreal doing a good job with control. Now behind the net, Montreal trying to cycle this one around. Pass to the point. That one goes off a of skating into a corner. Now Matheson tries to hold this one in, but of course another giveaway. <laughs> now Detroit tries to go in, but they peel back. Nearly four minutes here without a whistle in the second frame. Now Raymond out there and a shot on Primo. That one doesn't uh, look too difficult. He stops that one. And the Montreal Canadiens come into the offensive zone slowly. Both teams looking a little bit tired here, but Detroit trying to get something going as they come through center. And there's another giveaway, but this time to the Montreal Canadiens. Pass to Suzuki. He dumps that one in. Behind the net, played up by Reimer. Now Detroit trying to get the puck out of their zone. They can't do it. Held up at the point. Matheson in there. Pass to nobody. Now Suzuki's going to have to battle for it. Matheson takes a tumble behind the net. And this one stays alive, but bounces over Slavkovsky's stick. <laughs> oh, just messy all around. But uh, Montreal yeah. getting the better of the play here. Oh, another body behind that net. Hey, that's, I'm going to keep counting those. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> exactly that it. That's exactly it. So, <laughs> from Rocket Sports, which team and or player scores next? Make sure you let us know along with your score predictions. Now, Detroit in the offensive zone with a long shot. That's Comfer. And Primo stops that one up. So finally, a first whistle in uh, this period. Uh, Montreal yeah. <laughs> with the majority of the play. But just want to take a, a little look at the chat here since uh, we have a quick opportunity. Coming in from uh, Rocket Sports, which playoff bound team will suffer a first round exit? Uh, let us know in the chat. And before I let you answer this one, Nathan, uh, Amy chimes in with uh, uh, don't say Toronto, don't say Toronto. <laughs> All right, I won't say it then. So who do I'll you think? Boston? Boston? <laughs> yeah, I'll take Boston. That's a good pick. <laughs> I like that one. I think the Rangers. Yeah. I'll get I'll take them with the first round exit. Yeah, they both those teams struggled last season in the in the first round of playoffs. For sure. Uh Jonathan's predicting Kane with the next goal. Okay. And we get some uh red and white in the chat. So another Detroit Red Wings fan. <laughs> Well, Patrick Kane does have 12 points in uh, nine games against the Montreal Canadiens and five of those being goals. So um, he can definitely uh, do something. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, Nathan, you and I were talking about this earlier, but I think uh, we're going to try and make this a competition between Slavkovsky and Kane, but uh, they're pretty close in points. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, actually, I, I was a little bit shocked when I saw this, uh, saw this stat leading up to this live stream. And, and uh who would have thought that Uri Slavkovsky has 48 points and Patrick Kane has 47? Would, if, if you were told that at the beginning of the year, would you believe them? <laughs> no, that, that's pretty crazy from uh, Slavkovsky and Kane. Um, so, I mean, if one of them scores tonight, that could be the difference. As we get Armia with a shot, it trickles through Reimer and a Montreal Canadiens goal. Gallagher involved in that one again, too. Wow, Gallagher being on that second line, he's been looking good the last five games, you know? Like, it's... Yeah, that is crazy. I think he tapped it in, too. So, Amy with the oh, wow, and <laughs> great goal off of the rush. Nice move there by Armia, and then Gallagher, actually, I believe he chipped that in behind the blue line before that one went in. So, that's going to count as a Gallagher goal. Oh, wow. Easy tap in, and... Man, oh, yeah. Pepper just could not close the wickets there. Oh, yeah. Honestly, Gallagher, like, he's, uh, now he's just got to play a full season like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that one, that one was all Armia, though, if I'm being honest. Yeah. The Gallagher yeah. there, of course, making sure that one gets in. So there you go. Two point game for Gallagher and Montreal up two to one in the second period. <laughs> 
Uh, looking at the chat here, uh, Canadians Connection says, I agree, Nathan. Bruins and Jack Edwards with an early playoff <laughs> exit. <You> gotta go. <laughs> so now Detroit in the offensive zone. Shots are now 13 to 13, by the way. And Montreal comes away with the puck. So the Detroit Red Wings look pretty dead right now. But like, even when they have their opportunities, like, I'm not concerned. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, even, you know, Montreal, when they, when they had time in the offensive zone too, it's, you know, they keep kept the puck in there. It's just nothing towards the net, you know, um, and, and same, same kind of goes with, with the Red Wings. They're just more, um, you know, they're, they're off, their chances aren't happening as frequently as, as Montreal right now. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. And an icing charged against the Montreal Canadiens. I uh, just want to look at the chat here. I missed a few things. So I'll try to catch up. Uh, Canadians Connection says goaltending and special teams will have to be much better if the Canadians want to make the playoffs. And yeah, that's about right. <laughs> that's, that's pretty accurate. Uh, of course, Montreal has had a detrimental power play over the past couple of years. And of course, uh, goaltending with the uh, Primo and Montebo, it's been a little bit subpar. Uh, what are your thoughts on those, Nathan? Yeah, you know, Montreal Canadiens power play this season is uh, 26th in the league, you know, and if you want to be a playoff bound team uh, like the, the Detroit Red Wings, uh, their, their power play or potential playoff team, uh, they have their their play, their uh, power play is ninth in the league at 23%. So see a big difference in, in that uh, pen, uh, power play. So um, I do agree with those points. Uh, the, both those points need to be better for the Canadiens. And Detroit with a couple of... Uh, chances right in front. A couple of shots there. Stopped by Primo and covered up. Uh, so Detroit trying to respond here. Ben Schrott with a, with a little wrister from just above the hash marks. Exactly who you expect. Ben Sherratt, known <laughs> sniper. <laughs> of course, playing against the former team, he'll have a little <laughs> bit more uh, in the tank, I'm sure, uh, especially with playoffs on the line. Nice to see Ben Sherratt there. Also, Jeff Petrie playing for uh, the Detroit Red Wings. So a few connections between these two teams. Uh, in the chat here, just quickly, I wanted to throw up the octopus. No need to, to guess who this person is cheering for, so welcome, <laughs> Amon. And... Uh, course so, the lgrw as well so do, do we think an octopus is hitting the ice tonight or what <laughs> not in montreal <laughs> oh wait yeah we're in montreal whoops <laughs> yeah no worries either way it seems like <laughs> if if the game keeps going the way it has i think uh it's looking like montreal is a better team at least but of course uh, montreal just absolutely blew it last night being up four to one and then proceeding to lose. So you never know, but um, I'm pretty impressed with these Montreal Canadiens in this period. Yeah, and to kind of go off a little bit about uh, last night's game in that third period too, uh, Lyon made a couple key saves during that third period to keep um, the Detroit Red Wings at least in in, uh, in in contention. And then, you know, Lucas Raymond scoring the tying goal and then the game winner in the overtime was um, good for good for him, um, but you know it's like you said, anything can happen during these uh, during these games and and leading up into the the end of the, the period. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, Amy uh, in the chat with a great question here: uh, Are you Red Wings fans uh, pleased with the improvements made by the team this year? Any uh, favorite new players? So yeah, let us know in the chat. Uh, Jonathan already responding with uh, Raymond. So uh, of course, <laughs> Lucas Raymond. Uh, Amy responds to that pretty much immediately. Just says, I feel another Lucas Raymond goal coming in the third tonight. Of course, Raymond was the difference in the last game, scoring the tying and the winning goal. So he could certainly mm -hmm. have an impact tonight. And uh, he's taken a good step forward. I liked Raymond in his draft year. Um, I think a great pick by the Red Wings to get him at, uh, I believe that was number four. So, yeah, a bit of a sophomore slump last year, but coming into his own still. Yeah, and I like uh, some of the pieces they brought in, you know, Patrick Kane to, you know, show some of these younger guys, you know, a, a great veteran presence and, and show how to, you know, be a professional in the NHL is, is good for him. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, coming back to the game in just uh, a couple moments here, as uh, Montreal still up 2-1 to one after that Brendan Gallagher goal from Yoel Armia. Jaden Struble gets an assist on that one, so that's another young defender uh, contributing offensively, so that's uh, been pretty great to see. Um, and someone in here says, glad that I have a Raymond rookie card, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that, yeah, definitely hang on to that one. That could be worth something eventually. <laughs> yeah. 
Actually, I had a uh, Uri Slavkovsky rookie card, but I ended up having to sell it there. So uh, big fan of hockey cards here in general. How about for you, Nathan? Uh, I used to have a collection of hockey cards, uh, but I've, uh, you know, moving so many times in my life. The only one I actually have is uh, uh, a Ken, Ken Dryden card I have actually on my shelf behind me. as literally the only one I have currently. <laughs> Oof, that's a pretty good one. Uh, yeah. uh, back to the game here as uh, we're approaching the 10 minute mark just a little bit over 10 minutes to go in the second period shots 14 to 14 uh montreal goal still stands as uh that as the go-ahead right now so uh right now the montreal canadians are coming through the middle here and they'll come into the offensive zone the armia line is out there right now they scored off of their last shift now new hook out there with a shot Hits the post, stopped by Reimer. Reimer doing a snow angel now. <laughs> and a whistle. New hook with quite the move. Yeah. yeah. It was like, I'm pretty sure he banked that off the boards back to his stick. <laughs> yeah. Fooled everyone. And Reimer had to go down in a snow angel having no idea where the puck was. But loving this line so far. Oh, that beat Reimer too. Just hit the post. E. Oh, you got to be talking to your post there, James. Yeah, I believe that <laughs> Edmondson that kind of dived into the net to make sure the puck didn't go in. Yeah. <laughs> but that stays out. Probably Ooh. best scoring chance of the game so far. Almost came back to Armia. Yeah, like, that's exactly right. He just moved his foot. Like, if it moved a little bit further, it would have been right to Armia. It would probably put it in the net. So now... Uh, Puck has dropped, and Montreal has the puck cycling around again. And Reimer goes flying again, doing a almost like a windmill. No idea what happened there. Yeah, it's uh, I think and he's just shot goes in. I believe that's Slavkowski and Caulfield. <laughs> Paul Caulfield gets the rebound, so three to one Montreal. Oof. Caulfield goes up on Alex Debrincat by one goal. That's his 28th of the season. <laughs> oh, there, there, there's that. There's that race. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cole Caulfield winning that one so far. Montreal up three to one. Two quick goals here. Yeah, adds an assist to Slack. He's two points ahead of Patrick Kane. There you go. This is working out for Montreal so far. <laughs> but of course, anything can happen. Uh, the Red Wings certainly could come back. Yeah, and another forward uh, behind, there was down behind that net again. <laughs> it's all that up that end. Amy says, uh, should uh, they have gone back to Alex Lyon again tonight? Yeah. It's tough. It's a back to back. I don't think you could do that, unfortunately. But uh, well, yeah, three goals on. Those, yeah, I don't think those are Reimer's fault, are they? No, that 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 aspect like. That one's definitely not his fault. Like, there's nothing he could have done. He went to make the save, and the defenseman should have tied up Caulfield for sure. For sure. So now the Red Wings in the offensive zone trying to get something cooking. Rister stopped by Primo and scores. What the heck is Primo doing? He just randomly jumped up. Had, <laughs> I think he thought he had the puck, but he did not. The puck was just in front of him. We might get a review, though, it looks oh. like. But oh. Primo had no idea what was going on in that play. What? That was, uh, wow. <laughs> so just going to check the replay here. So Primo stops this one. Yeah, I don't, Primo had no idea where the puck was. Oh, no. Bouncing puck, it hit Primo's blocker. Primo was looking somewhere else, and it's Valeno that gets the puck in. Oh, I think he was looking for it to be, like, way up in the air. Yeah directly in front of him and it, like amy says red wings get one back oh. zare says oh yes oh yes and jonathan <laughs> with let's go please count i still no reason why that would not count yeah that should count that's uh that's a primo look at that face on him he's not happy. yeah yeah uh, even the montreal defenders i'm not sure why they didn't jump on that a little bit quicker too so there you go uh, big mistake, and this is going to cost Red Wings within one now. Three to two Habs. Turning point? <laughs> yeah, I think so. 
And uh, Rocket Sports chimes in with, uh, that's a great comment from one of our viewers. Uh, what's your uh, most special hockey card you own? Let us know in the chat. We'd love to hear from all of you. Savard with a shot that, that that one misses. Montreal now in the offensive zone. Montreal leading shots now 17 to 16. And she joins the chat with an oof that sucks. <laughs> Now the Red Wings in the offensive zone. You have Kane and Comfer out there. That's a giveaway. Caulfield coming the other way. Maybe a tripping call coming up. I'm not sure. Caulfield with a shot. That one misses, but looks like no penalty. <laughs> Great uh -oh. stop by Reimer. And now the Red Wings coming the other way, bouncing puck right at the blue line, and Kane picks that one up, uncontested. Fabry in the offensive zone. Shot misses. That goes high on the blocker side of Primo, so they're not shooting glove side, they're going blocker side now. Fisher behind the net, shot by the Red Wings. That one gets blocked. Yeah, Red Wings like, now have some juice. I think they liked what they saw with that puck uh, bouncing off the blocker. Yeah, that's exactly right. They keep going for it. Yeah. <laughs> so now uh, back into the uh, offensive zone for the Montreal Canadiens. They're going to try to pick it up. Slavkovsky gets it in front. Wide open stop by Reimer. <laughs> that could be the season there. That's saved by Reimer on Slavkovsky. Wide open. That's what? We'll, we'll go two times for sure. He should have had a goal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, can't finish. Ah. Can't finish. But he gets an assist on the Caulfield goal. So he gets a point tonight. He's that one to 20. Exactly. So Canadians Connection pointing something out off of that uh, last goal coming from Joe Valletto, assisted by Shane Gotts, Despair, and Daniel Sprung. Uh, Primo was looking at the referee. He thought that uh, the play was dead on the delayed penalty. So, a bit of a complicated situation there. Uh, of course, uh, the officials went and they, they looked like they reviewed this briefly, but they still called it a goal. Hmm. So, good on Detroit picking up on that and uh, playing until the whistle, essentially. So, it's, it's a mistake by Primo. I, I hope he doesn't make that one again. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I agree with you on that one, Michael. No more of those. <laughs> And uh, Michael in the chat, in regards to uh, favorite hockey cards, uh, says that they have a Ken Dryden card, 73, 74 tops. So that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Forget what your mine is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We can do a little tour of uh, your setup a little bit later on. But right. uh, for now, anyways, this is uh, this is kind of, this is game's gotten interesting. The uh, Red Wings certainly looked dead coming into that second period when Montreal scored a pair of goals there, coming from Gallagher and Caulfield. Uh, that last one seems to have revitalized them. They've had some good opportunities since then, getting some more zone time as well. Uh, right out of the gate here in the second period, it was all Montreal. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. And you know, I think if you want to kind of look at last night's game. You know, it wasn't over. For the, I mean, Detroit kind of has the same kind of tag to this game as it did last night. You know, down down by a couple goals halfway through the second. Might be able to pick it up. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, definitely a good goal for the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, maybe a little bit of luck in there, too. But uh, you know what? Uh, you win some, you lose some. And that was certainly one that Caden Primo lost on. Yeah. And uh, Montreal in the offensive zone here. Face off one wrist shot from the point from Logan Mayu. And now the Detroit Red Wings coming the other way. But Montreal quick to pounce and uh, clog up that neutral zone, not letting Detroit get through easy. Mayu trying to <laughs> protect the puck. He does. That's a great move by Mayu. Yeah. And now Montreal can't get past that blue line. Detroit finally gets in there, and it's going to be an offside as it pops right out. So both teams throwing their bodies everywhere. Uh, yeah, I think tempers are going. Both teams have momentum. This is going to be a fun one. And uh, like Amy says, third period might be intense tonight. I agree mm -hmm. for sure. Canadians Connection says, play to the whistle, Caden. And I think that's the exact point off of that last goal. Well, I remember... Uh... 
I remember David Savard uh, taking that shot at that open net, came Primo passing it to him and uh, it going in. I'm pretty sure it was against Tampa Bay. They weren't playing to the whistle and that was a clear uh, goal for them too. So yeah, got the good luck, got the bad luck. Just got to gotta figure out the in-between. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, she chimes in with the, come on, Mayu, you got this, dude. So, of course, Mayu making his NHL debut tonight. He's already on the scoreboard with an assist off of that first goal. Uh, let, less than seven minutes to go in the second period here uh, in the offensive zone for the Detroit Red Wings. Shot at the point one time or that one doesn't go through. Tries again. That one's an easy stop by Primo. Now Armia tries to send that one up the ice. Montreal going through center. And she sends a go Habs go into the chat. Just a little reminder too, let us know all your score predictions. We'll take those up until the end of the game. Who do you think is going to win and what's the final score? Now Patrick Kane in the offensive zone. Wrist shot from far, stopped by Primo. He stops that one and hangs on. No rebound on this. No looking at the ref. Heading into another commercial break here. 5.57 to go in the second period. Uh, Nathan, are you sensing another goal coming up? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I was going to be content with seeing a 3-2, 3-1. But I, I have a feeling both teams are going to at least net at least one more goal apiece um, to make this game a little more stressful uh, for the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh do you think goaltending has been weak from either team? Like I think I mentioned earlier that, yeah, I mean, Reimer's save percentage probably doesn't look great at this point in the game. But also, like, these were some pretty good goals scored against him. Um, do you think that either goalie is uh, disappointed? Uh, I, I think Alex Lyons... Uh pretty happy with himself even though he's down by one goal i, I think the one goalie that's going to be upset with himself is is Caden primo um just to go back on that second goal yeah. that uh went in i think you mean reimer that, though right oh yeah sorry yeah reimer yeah um so i mean uh i mean for for the the james reimer i think for him um i, I mean he played, made a couple good saves as well so uh I guess we'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out but uh i, I can't say necessarily uh reimer has been at fault tonight yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Amy asked a good question here. So does Detroit tie the game or do the Habs re-extend their lead? Uh, we want to hear from all of you. I feel like the Habs are going to get another goal this period. That's my gut feeling, but we'll have to wait and see on that. What do you think, Nathan? Yeah, you know what? I, I'm, 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 I'm very strong that Montreal is definitely going to score the next one. Um, just to just to put the heat on uh, Detroit. But we all know how Detroit played when they were down by two goals last night. So not over till the till the last whistle goes right so for sure josh chimes in with the go wings and she counters that with a go habs go <laughs> so uh fans of both teams here in the chat uh we appreciate uh, fans of everyone and uh, just uh, make sure you let us know all your score predictions i know it's an important one for the red wings tonight so it's going to be a fun one to watch here yes no it's definitely going to be a fun one here and uh it's uh Definitely been good so far, so going to be entertaining for the next little bit of the second, for sure. For sure. Uh, just going to read this from Canadians Connection. Logan Mayu is currently second in ice time for the Canadians with 12-21, so certainly getting a lot of responsibility on that top pairing alongside Mike Matheson. Now Montreal in the offensive zone here, battling for the puck, but the wings come away with it, and they'll come back the other way. 5.30 to go, so plenty of time. A little bit of a rush shot there. Gloved down by Primo. He hangs on to that one safely. And the Red Wings will have an offensive zone face-off here off that rush. Amy says, uh, love seeing Mayu getting his, getting good minutes in his debut. Uh, are Hudson's minutes as good as last night? So we can check up on Hudson's minutes in the, just a little bit, or if a Canadian's Connection wants to and gets there before me. Oh, and it looks like they did. Canadian's <laughs> Connection says Lane Hudson not too far behind with 11-14 in ice time. So lots of responsibility being given to the young defenders here in the first and second games. It's good, though. I, I'm glad I'm glad to see that uh, Martin Stanley has given them that, the, the ice time that they deserve, you know, especially in their first couple games and or first game. For sure. 
as uh, Detroit has the puck behind their net looking to break up. Uh, Got to pull up a chat here from Amon. Uh, we want uh, the first Rangers versus Wings since the 1950 final original six days. That would be pretty uh -huh. sweet to see, of course. It's uh, nice of you to point that one out. So stop by Reimer, and now the ring, the wings are coming the other way. Stop by Primo, and now the Montreal Canadiens are going to come away off the rush. So exchanging rush chances. Slavkovsky in there to Suzuki. Oh, it goes high, but can't get it. He knocked that one out of the air, and I think Reimer just got it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's getting more and more intense as every shot goes towards the net. And she chimes in with, of course, Mike Matheson must have the most ice time, right? <laughs> and Canadian's Connection confirms that's right, she. Uh, just a few seconds more than Mayu. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Matheson, has is, is been a little bit hit and miss tonight. Uh, he's, like, when he's in the offensive zone, he's been all right, but some bad giveaways. He's struggled to exit his defensive zone for sure. Yeah, a lot in that uh, the first, or the last half of the first period there, he was giving a puck up a lot. Yeah, exactly. So, offensive zone face-off for the Habs. Oof. That one gets dropped. And Matheson out there. He's dangling with the puck. Shot goes through. Wrist shot stopped. Red Wings come the other way. Lots of one-and-done chances here the last few minutes. Yeah, for, for both teams, I think uh, they're, they're definitely picking up on each other's um, – like their, their tendencies. For sure. Mayu with almost an opportunity in front. He can't get the shot off. And he'll get a penalty. So Habs to the power play. Logan Mayu draws a penalty on that one. So slashing against the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah. So Habs will go up with the, the first power play of the game. Yeah, not not a good uh, call by uh, uh, not a good play by a fourth liner for uh, uh, Detroit Red Wings. I'm sure they're not seeing uh, too much ice time, but when you're out there and you take a penalty, e not good. That's exactly it. <laughs> Canadians Connection says Mayu uh, should have been told that Matheson rarely passes to young players. Ask Slaff. <laughs> so there you go. That might be why all the giveaways. We get some go Habs go, and uh, let's go Red Wings in the chat here. Did it take like 43 games for uh, Matheson to pass the slap? Or <laughs> <laughs> so Montreal on the power play here, Suzuki passing it back to Matheson, back to Suzuki, down low, Slavkovsky with a shot at the side of the net, shoves, shoves this puck directly through the crease, and Oof. now back to Suzuki, back to the point for Matheson. Now Suzuki. Caulfield with a shot. Oh, great stop by Reimer diving. <laughs> oh, what a save by Reimer on that one. Caulfield picked his spot. Save of the night. <laughs> oh, desperation. And just like Amy says, Reimer has made some incredible saves tonight. But uh, he's also uh, been on a bit of an adventure in his crease, which is true. He's been all over the place with lots of diving. <laughs> so Slavkovsky sends this one around to Suzuki Puck pops up front in the net And Detroit will send this one All the way back to Primo Less than 50 seconds to go uh, Suzuki leads uh, the Montreal Canadiens With 12 power play goals this season Less than 40 to go Lane Hudson out there Oh well, that's good to see him on the power play yeah, second unit. That's going to be a big opportunity for him. But Detroit clears this one out. Less than 30 to go now. Yeah, and Canadian's connection confirming Hudson on power play two. Now coming through center, Lane Hudson with some dangle. Now Gallagher's out there and coughs up the puck. That one goes all the way to the other end. Maybe pops over the glass, actually. So puck <laughs> over the glass. Five on three for a few seconds here. <laughs> Yeah. Delay of game, Raymond to the box. Oh no. That's there he good for that. So this is gonna be a lot of power play time for the Montreal Canadians. Can the 
The Red Wings 17th uh, place in the league uh, penalty kill uh, hold out for the next little bit here. Oof, we'll see. Uh, Canadians connection points out Pearson is also on power play too, so maybe a little discredit towards Hudson on that one. <laughs> Oh. oh, shot stopped by Reimer again. Right in front, Montreal can't get the shot off. Now Detroit clears that one out. It's four on four. Or sorry, five on four for the Montreal Canadiens. Larkin with a shot shorthanded. Primo has to play that one. And now Montreal regrouping with the big uh, first power play unit out there with Safkowski. Amy asked the question, biggest PK for Detroit this year? And absolutely, mm -hmm. this could be the season, This like these two power plays. Ben Sherrod out there for the Red Wings. Matheson at the point now. 113 left on the power play. Giveaway. Down Detroit heading the other way, killing some time and just fluttering it behind Caden Primo. Now Caulfield's going to come up the ice. And just a little reminder, in the dying minute here, uh, we're going to take a three-minute break, but we'll be back for an intermission show. We'll talk about both teams, talk about some playoffs, talk about what to look forward to if you're a Habs fan as well. Matheson at the point, 50 seconds left on the power play, a little bit over 30 to go in this period. Matheson in front, stopped by Re Reimer and a rebound, can't get through. And now it looks like behind the neck, Petrie and Caulfield going at it. Oh. Oof. You can see Caulfield's visor just all steamy right there. Yeah. He's not happy. So looking at the replay, point shot. Reimer had some trouble finding that one. And Caulfield actually looks like he's going after Petrie. Petrie's got him in the headlock. Yeah, he's heated. Yeah, something Caulfield's happened. Heated. Oh, I think a little cross check oh. there by Petrie. That'll... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Petrie just like one hand. <laughs> so less than 30 seconds to go in the period. Gallagher behind the net finds an open man battling in front of the net. It's getting physical here. Less than 20 to go. Armia and a shot bounces off of uh, Reimer. Oof. Detroit clears it all the way. Less than 10 seconds in the period. I think this might be it. Montreal might get one more chance here if they can. But they can't. Detroit sends oh. it out. And the comes to an end here. <laughs> so we have another great intermission show coming. We'll take a, a three-minute break, like I said. Plenty of great stuff to talk about. Make sure you stick with us. And we'll be back here in three minutes. <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone, to our live stream watch along as the Habs are taking on the Detroit Red Wings. I'm Nathan, a proud contributor to the Rocket Sports Media, and I'm here with my Rocket Sports Media colleague, Michael, who is also the host of the Canadian Connection podcast. This is our intermission show. How was that uh, second period for you? It was a wild one. Shots on goal 16 to 7 for the Montreal Canadiens in that second period. So they're leading the shot department. Uh, Habs lead the Red Wings 3 to 2. CH goals coming from Newhook, Gallagher, and Caulfield. Um, the two Detroit goals uh, coming from Valeno in that uh, second period and Moritz Sider in the first period. So a little bit of back and forth here, but it certainly felt like the Montreal Canadiens led the way through the majority of that period at least. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. You know, it's uh, especially when you compare the two games from last night to tonight, you know, Montreal having 16 shots in one period alone, they only had 10 through the last two periods of last night's game. So I think they've uh, decided to change the game just a little bit tonight. So uh, if you want more content uh, on the Montreal Canadiens, I'll just briefly show you how you can find all of that. All the best uh, Montreal Canadiens content is at THN.com slash Montreal. That's the hockey news for Montreal. You'll find all your game day posts. You'll find the game recap after the game on there as well. And we'll keep you up to date throughout the offseason with feature articles and coverage on the Laval Rocket. Also, make sure to follow us on all of our social medias at Rocket Sports on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Plus, check out our weekly podcast the Canadians Connection at CanadiansConnection.fm. You can find that also on all of your favorite streaming platforms. Hit like and subscribe. And if you're enjoying watching this uh, with us, make sure you hit like and subscribe to our channel here. We put out tons of great Montreal Canadiens content. But you know what? Let's start this off by talking a little bit about these Detroit Red Wings and their playoff chances. So it's a Tons of crazy scenarios have to happen for the Detroit Red Wings to get to the playoffs here. Um, specifically, if you want to talk about uh, guys that could have an impact for the Detroit Red Wings in the playoffs, I don't think you have to look much further than a guy like Ben Sherratt, who was pretty instrumental in the, that uh, Montreal Canadiens run to the cup final. Um, what have you thought about Ben Sherratt tonight? And what do you think he can do for this uh, Detroit Red Wings team as a, uh, they have the potential of making the playoffs tonight. Well, Ben Sherratt, he's he's a big body, right? Um, he he battles in front of the net, likes to clear out the front of the net, and that was the big job he did uh, in that Stanley Cup uh, fight up to the Stanley Cup final uh, back in 2021 for the Montreal Canadiens. But for Ben Sherratt uh, tonight, he's uh, still doing what he he does best. He's trying to clear the front of the net, play his body. Uh, use his size uh, against uh, you know Montreal, who's got some smaller players. Um, and uh, honestly, I think for for what he can bring to a team, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to be his size, his 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 grit, um, e even a little bit of uh, you know playoff uh, experience too as well. You can show some of these Detroit Red Wings defensemen who may or may not have been in a playoff uh, game yet. Uh, show kind of show them the ropes and kind of guide them to uh, some su success in in the playoffs. For sure. And what prompted me to ask this was actually from Amy saying, hey, Red Wings fans, uh, what have you thought about Sherrod this year? And the response from Amon, I think, says it all. Uh, my only thought is the heart. <laughs> stocks go down, stocks go up, stocks go down. And yeah, I think that's exactly who Ben Sherrod is as a player, to be honest. You get what you get. Everyone knows who he is. But when it comes around playoff time, certainly useful. And he has a ton of experience. So someone that I think we'll have our eyes on. And, of course, there's a Habs connection to it. Uh, we got to see Jeff Petrie, another former Hab, on, uh, playing for this uh, Detroit Red Wings team, uh, get a little bit feisty with Cole Caulfield. Uh, what do you think about his potential contributions? Uh, you know what? I think uh, his defensive contributions are he's more of a defensive guy. Uh, you're going to see him you know, play the body a little bit, not, not as much as Ben Sherratt, but uh, – I don't know him getting into the heads of the star players. I think uh, just because he knows, I think Montreal Canadiens and knows the star players very well. I think uh, um, you know a little bit of heated uh, incident with Cole Caulfield there uh, um, uh, had to happen. You know, based on a play that he did. But um, honestly, I think Jeff Petrie uh, brings a lot of uh, leadership. Uh, been on a couple different teams and he can uh, get, give a little bit of uh, veteran presence for for a young defensive core. 
For sure. And Chi chime, chimes in with a great point. Technically, we're still paying for Petrie, so there, there's that, <laughs> which is true. Of course, Montreal retained on Petrie and it's the second time they traded him, uh, which was to the Detroit Red Wings this uh, last offseason. Uh, from more of a Habs perspective here, uh, just looking at uh, some former Habs abroad, are there any players that uh, you have your eyes on in the playoffs? Yeah, actually, I've got uh, one guy uh, I've been uh, playing uh, close attention to would be uh, an Oliver Kapanen. Um, he's been uh, really tearing up the playoffs this year, uh, having 13 points in nine playoff games. Um, and honestly, uh, wasn't really a, a pick of mine to really kind of take uh, take uh, the next steps in his game and really uh, take take a uh, you know the lead here in, in the in the points for uh, his division. Um, in his league, right? So, I mean, for, for this uh, player to do so um, at 20 years old is, is a great accomplishment for sure. For sure. Of course, that's uh, Montreal Canadiens prospect Oliver Kapanen that uh, you're talking about there. Um, are there any, like, former Habs uh, potentially getting to the playoffs this season that uh, you're looking forward to watching? I had my eyes on maybe, like, a Sean Monaghan in Winnipeg, but I know there's a whole bunch of them around the NHL, too. Yeah, it's it's funny you should bring up Sean Monaghan from uh, Winnipeg because uh, you know uh, Tyler Toffoli from the Winnipeg, uh, who was uh, recently acquired by uh, the Winnipeg Jets from New Jersey Devils, uh, would be another good uh, player to keep an eye on. He's uh, you know he's been able to um, you know when he first got to Winnipeg get get some points on the board and and show why uh, he's still a scoring threat. He's kind of cooled off a little bit uh, last little bit but uh you know when the playoffs come around uh you know Sean Monaghan and Tyler Toffoli are, are going to be those big pieces uh, for those Winnipeg Jets uh, moving forward so just a little bit of an update because tonight there are playoff implications for the Red Wings uh, an important game to watch or to keep an eye on if you are a Red Wings fan is the Capitals versus Flyers currently tied one to one both captains getting on the board uh Alex Ovechkin and Sean Couturier for their respective teams. Um, pretty much the situation here, and I'll try to recap this as best as I can. For the Red Wings to get to the playoffs, they need any win versus Montreal tonight, and uh, the Caps can earn one or less points against the Philadelphia Flyers, or one point against Montreal and a regulation loss uh, by both the Capitals and the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. So, yeah, it's, it gets a little bit complex here. But uh, to sum that up the best, the easiest way for the Red Wings to get to the playoffs is a win tonight. But of course, uh, if you want a little bit of a backup, a couple other games to keep an eye on, we probably won't find out until everything is over. Yeah, that Eastern Conference race is something else. That's uh, it, It's honestly great to kind of be a part of, you know. Um, I mean, Montreal, obviously not a part of it, but being able to do this live stream and, and, and kind of, I feel like there's a, there's just a, something in the air, you know, like it's, you know, playoffs are coming. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, just another thing, we talked about this a little bit during the period, but uh, Caulfield officially at 28 goals. So that's uh, certainly a career high for him uh, in his first full 82 games that he's played. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, Cole Caulfield's season as he's currently got more goals than one Alex to bring at? Yes. Yes. He definitely does have more goals than Alex to bring at, but, not at the caliber, yeah. I mean, at least what I thought he was going to get to, you know, at the beginning of the season, I was thinking, you know, 40, can he get to 50? Um, so uh, unfortunately he didn't get to that feat, but, you know, being able to beat last year's goal totals in a, in a season where he's changed his game a bit, you know, if you look at his assists, he's got career high in assists, but even you can tell in today's game, uh, like in tonight's game, he's, he's playing the body a little bit more off the puck, the way he, the way he puts himself in a position to make those defensive plays without the puck has, has made a big difference. I, I feel this year. Um, and that's, uh, that's definitely uh, one big thing I've noticed about his game outside of the uh, not as frequently uh, scoring goals. For sure. I mentioned Alex to of course, Caulfield has more goals than him, but to with more points overall, 67 points on the season, uh, not been super noticeable tonight, but of course this was a big uh, acquisition by the Detroit Red Wings. Um, Oftentimes, people, when they talk about Cole Caulfield, they compare him to Alex DeBrincat. But uh, I'll just get some brief thoughts uh, on Alex DeBrincat in the season he's had. Uh, anything you noticed him, from him tonight as well? Well, Alex DeBrincat, he's, uh, you know, he's he's had a fairly good career so far in his NHL career. 
Um, you know, like you said, this year he's had 67 points. Um, like, you know, last year, like you said, he was brought over from Ottawa. Um, but I think for, for Alex Dabrinkat, he, he's uh, been able to kind of take a step aside from that goal scoring touch he had uh, you know, a couple seasons back. And, and you know, he's, he's, he's finding better areas to put himself in. So if it's, you know, with the puck, he, he's, you know, being able to get more assists on there. But uh, without the puck, you know, he's he's even, you know, putting his teammates in better positions to uh, get on the board. But I think the one thing for Alex to bring at for tonight, um, I, I've seen him here and there. Like, I, I, he's not standing out as much as I would hope to see on a, on a you know, a do or die game. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. Looking at the chat here, Mike Rashel chimes in. Uh, this Wings team is hard to watch. Most important game of the year, and they continue to look flat. <laughs> Habs and Wings uh, should be lining up uh, for many competitive playoff series in the next few years. So a little bit of a thumbs down and a little bit of a thumbs up to uh, the Detroit Red Wings from Mike Rashel. And I think that's a great point. Uh, that second period up until when they scored, they were quite flat in general. So Certainly looking for more from a lot of their guys. Alex DeBrincat could be one of them, uh, or could be uh, one of our players to watch. I, I know I mentioned JT Confer had a big pl- role in uh, last night's game, but uh, what have you thought about your player to watch so far? Uh, you know, Logan Mayu, he's uh, he's looked good. You know, like he's already got, he got a first NHL assist uh, or a first NHL point uh, this game. Um, he's been playing the body, which is good. And uh, he's taken the body, you know, to get the feel of that NHL power some of these guys can have. Um, but, you know, I feel like he's not he's not making it overly complicated. Uh, he had a great move on uh, on his own defensive blue line there on uh, one of the Red Wings players. But, like, he, he's doing the right plays, just banking the puck out, getting it to safety. Um, and he's he's trying to minimize those mistakes to, that, that are going to cost him. So, I mean, I think Logan Mayu is having a, a pretty good game so far in his, in his first NHL game. For sure. Canadians Connection chimes in with uh, Habs have seven seconds left on the power play that will carry over to start the third period. A little bit disappointed in that Habs power play. They've had a few opportunities there, but it was almost like one after another with a brief uh, five on three in the middle of it. Um, yeah, they. I feel like they, they had chances, just could not generate enough. I was yeah, genuinely disappointed to see that after all that power play time, they still could not score. Yeah, I, honestly, like, I, I'm going to, I don't want to knock the Montreal Canadiens, but I think it's just because, you know, we have a really strong first power play unit. And then our second, obviously, our second power play unit due to injury and, and whatever other circumstances that are happening, that our, our second power play unit isn't as strong um, as, as most uh, teams would have a, you know, one two punch. Ours is kind of a one punch and maybe a, maybe a two, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it kind of sucks. To, to see the power play not do as well as, you know, we'd hope. But honestly, I think, um, you know, there, there'll definitely be some adjustments over over the offseason and, and coming into the new season. For sure. Uh, Jonathan chimes in with the Philly tied the game up. Yeah, I believe we mentioned this just at the start of the intermission. But yeah, one to one Philly against the Caps. So, of course, uh, if you're a Red Wings fan, you're definitely watching the score there, especially seeing that uh, the Montreal Canadiens are ahead of the Red Wings so far in this one. Canadians connection with a great point here. Uh, watching the race for the fifth best draft odds, Ottawa leads Boston two nothing early in the third. Classic Ottawa winning when it doesn't matter. But <laughs> if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, uh, of course, one of the things uh, to look forward to going forward is that draft lottery. And if Montreal remains in that fifth best uh, position to get that first overall pick, they have an 8.5 percent chance. Uh, at uh, getting that first overall pick. What can you tell me about the draft lottery and uh, what are you rooting for if you're a Habs fan tonight? Well, I, I think for the draft lottery, um, it's it, it's going to come down. Obviously, it's going to come down to the final uh, games, um, especially when you got, you know, teams playing tonight, teams playing tomorrow night. But uh, the, the one thing I noticed about the draft lottery um, over the last season and then, you know, looking forward to this season, the only last season, the only team that moved was a third place team that moves up to number one pick. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen this year, but like it, it's always wishful thinking that we want to like get our team to be moved up, uh, to get in that first overall pick. But I think for, for me, I want, I want Arizona to, yeah, I want Arizona and Ottawa to both lose. So Montreal can stay in the fifth spot. <laughs> <laughs> but well, you want them to win, probably, right? Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, yeah, I want them to win. Thank you for the correction. No uh, worries. 
and Ottawa is doing that right now. So, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And I think too, um, like you have to wait until tomorrow night. And unfortunately it's a 10 PM start where Arizona plays uh, against the Edmonton Oilers to wrap up the season right now, Montreal and Arizona are tied points wise. So if Montreal ends up winning tonight, um, you certainly, uh, you hope that uh, the Arizona Coyotes beat the Edmonton Oilers tomorrow. And with uh, Ottawa, I believe Ottawa is up one point on Montreal at the moment. So again, if, if Ottawa and Montreal wins, that's not going to change anything at all. Yeah, so again, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get complicated. But of course, look out for uh, the uh, Canadians Connection episode coming out on Saturday where we'll have a clearer view of how this is all going to look. Uh, we'll uh, sum- summarize up up for you on Saturday on any of your favorite podcasting platforms. Uh, It's called Canadians Connection. And you can also find it on this YouTube channel next Monday. Uh, Last uh, week's episode is already up on this channel. And same with the Rocket Hockey Report. So make sure you check out those after the game has finished. So third period underway. Great question from Canadians Connection. What's everyone got for snacks in the third? Make me jealous. I want to hear your snacks in the chat. (laughs) Water. (laughs) <laughs> yep, I'm right there with you. <laughs> Detroit with some early zone time here. Cycling around in a long shot. That one got blocked. Cider with that shot, too. Huh. And that one goes all the way out of the zone. Montreal leading shots 25 to 20. Uh, up one or uh, up three to two, the one goal lead, and they get called for an icing here. So this is going to be an intense third period. It's, yeah, Detroit fans, I'm not envious of what you're feeling right now, but we appreciate you watching this one out with us. Hey, we we felt this before. Maybe not for a playoff spot, but to keep our hopes alive. (laughs) That's exactly right. So Detroit wins the face off there. They have it at the point, but Caulfield being very aggressive manages to shove the puck out of the zone. Goes on a race for it in the uh, offensive zone, causing some havoc. Josh Anderson out there, too. Jake Evans out there as well. Trying to protect the puck, but Josh Anderson gives that one away. Now the Red Wings coming back the other way with some speed. Hudson with a good defensive play there, boxing out to the Detroit Red Wings. Out the side of the net, Patrick Kane with a shot that gets, or with a pass that gets blocked. Oof, great uh, blocked pass there by the Montreal Canadiens. And a big collision in the Montreal Canadiens defensive zone as well. Slow to get up, both players there, but uh, Lane Hudson out there to play the puck, taking his time with it. Lane Hudson, of course, wearing number 48. 48 might be my least favorite hockey number, if I'm being completely honest. So I hope he (laughs) changes it, but we'll see. Probably not, not much yeah. to pick from. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so about two minutes into this one, not a whole lot yet, yet to get our first shot on net in this period. Montreal hammers that puck in behind Reimer. And Detroit's taking their time with the change to try and come up the ice here. And they can't get through the neutral zone, so they're going to have to try it again. Montreal gone the way. Now Montreal with possession past the blue line. Alex Newhook with a shot. Reimer has some trouble finding that rebound. He ends up behind his net. Now Petrie and Newhook going at it. So Petrie, of course, showing a little bit of temper here, being very aggressive. Yeah, he doesn't like his former team anymore. (laughs) No, absolutely not. And just a little reminder, too, if you've enjoyed this stream so far tonight, uh, make sure you hit the like button and share this with more hockey fans. That goes a long way in helping us out. So we appreciate uh, if each and every one of you could do that. And, of course, lots of Red Wings fans chiming in (laughs) to say that uh, it's uh, 1-1 against Philly and Washington. Yeah, Philly still tied with the Capitals 1-1. So we'll, I'll, I'll try to keep an eye on it, but let me know in the chat too if you see an update on that score. So face off in the offensive zone. Jake Evans out there with Pearson. That puck gets dropped. 
Dylan Larkin out there for the Detroit Red Wings, and they're going to come out of that defensive zone with speed. Lucas Raymond out there too. To bring it with a wrist shot stopped, almost picks up a rebound. To bring it again, sends a pass in front. That one doesn't go anywhere. Now Montreal coming the other way. Oh. And uh, Zaire chimes in with most stre stressful Wednesday ever. Actually, I believe it's Tuesday. So <laughs> if that helps at all. Oh. So now Detroit coming the other way. Montreal leading shots 26 to 22 right now. Sprung with a shot. That one doesn't go anywhere. Now sending that puck around. Cider out there to Sherrod. Sherrod comes in with some speed. Looking for a wraparound. He cycles it back to the point. Wrist shot stop. Big rebound stop by Primo. Sprong with a goal. <laughs> it's a fluky goal. I don't what the heck is up with Primo tonight? That should not have gone in. Primo down on the butterfly and just easy flip in behind Primo. Oh no. With Todd with the goal. <laughs> Oof. Tied up. Should Montebo go back? <laughs> Made the comment for Lion. Yeah. <laughs> What a ridiculous, like, oh, man, oh, Primo. No. That's uh -oh. from behind the goal line, too. Oh, <laughs> Daniel no. Sprung with the goal. It was just. Oh, no. That's two. Yeah. Comes yeah, in threes, Amy. right? <laughs> yeah. Amy says we have ourselves a game, people. So there you go. <laughs> oh, we got some. <laughs> Uh, Tyler chimes in with, no, I need the Habs to win for the Penguins to get in tonight. <laughs> so, yeah, this is an important game from a lot of aspects. If Detroit wins this, like, they're in the playoffs, and that's it for everyone else. <laughs> Don't worry, Tyler. My brother's rooting for the same outcome. Oof. So, 3-3 three to three with uh, 16 to go in the third here. Ooh. JT wow. Confer out there with a big hit. Now Montreal tries to come the other way. Hudson out there. Assists on that goal are from uh, Valeno and Sider. Mm. Now with uh, Detroit having possession behind their net, they're going to take a change and take their time here. Waiting for them to break up the puck. Now Jeff Petrie passes that one up. Red Wings with a shot at the side of the net. Stop by Primo. They're gonna be New hook there to the collect that. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> They're going to be shooting everything at the net. Yeah. <laughs> well, Amy with the uh, raise your hand if you're stressed. I'm stressed. I don't know why this game just in general. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, I, I feel like I'm like, starting to sweat. Like, I think I'm starting to feel the effects of this game. <laughs> yeah, that's just it. Uh, Can Canadians Connection says, uh, too bad uh, goals given up by Primo. Uh, he was born in Michigan, a secret Red Wings fan, maybe. <laughs> so there you uh, go with the conspiracy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, Detroit fans are going to love this stat. When Detroit scores three goals or more, they're 37, 13, and five this season. Oof. <laughs> it's not looking good. But, but the Habs, when they score three goals, they're 27, 10, and seven. So... Okay. <laughs> Both teams uh, good with three goals. <laughs> yeah. A very similar game to the one last night. Uh, Montreal Canadiens having a lead for most of this game, and they just absolutely spoiled it. Yep. That's, uh, I, don't I, don't think, I don't think any of these Red Wings goals against Primo have been that good. Like, Primo's really just dropped the ball here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Montebo doesn't look... Uh, <laughs> he looks confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's waiting to come into the net. Yeah. So, long shot from Petrie. That one gets stopped. Now Matheson with the puck. Trying to send this one out of the zone. Mayu passes it up. Pearson. Now Reimer plays it behind the net. Edvinson sending the puck up. 
And Montreal coming the other way. There's Pearson. He can't get a shot off. Behind the net, Dvorak's out there battling for the puck. Oof. And there you go. Matheson gets that one. Long <laughs> shot. That one doesn't go anywhere. And now Petrie out there trying to get the puck out. He can't. No. Detroit does get it out. And they'll take control and circle back here. So we have uh, Michael Chapman in with the Detroit Red Wings fan here, but appreciate your play-by-play. -play. Thank you, guys. And thanks uh, to you. We appreciate you joining us tonight. Well, I think it's going to be a Ben Strott or Petrie goal for uh, the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could only be one of the two. Suzuki with a breakaway. Stop by Reimer. Oh. oh. That was, yeah, Ben Chirot maybe just got back on time there. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Potential game saver by Reimer. I was a little bit disappointed that Suzuki didn't do a little bit more with that breakaway, but I think Chirot caught up to him. So, yeah, yeah he was just trying to get that shot off. He's got that Good long save. reach, too. <laughs> yeah, that's just it. Good save by Reimer, though. So heading into another commercial break here, tied up three to three and just, wow. Quite the game still. Uh, let us know your score predictions in the chat. If you haven't already uh, it's yeah, this has been a very stressful game for Red Wings fans for sure. Uh, for Habs fans, uh, this, I think it's been nice to see uh, the contributions from Mayu and Hudson, but disappointing to see that the Habs have given up another lead yeah. And yeah, just mirror image of last night almost, right? Yeah, I'm uh I think I'm having some PTSD right now <laughs> from last night's game. Like it's uh it's gonna be another overtime. <laughs> oh yeah. And We're just a little, up, a little update there too. Capitals and Flyers still one to one, no changes there. Uh, I know Red Fing Wings fans are keeping an eye on that one for sure. Um I guess just like, do you have a gut feel of how things are going? I feel like the momentum has changed to be more in Detroit's favor right now. Do you think the next goal is going to be a Detroit goal? See, my my uh, my fan side of me says no, but my gut is saying yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just just from what I'm seeing, right? Like it's uh, the Red Wings turned it on in the third. Um, I know we're not quite through halfway, but. Yeah. Uh, the, the Red Wings are, you know, if you look at the sh shot attempts, shots on goal, it's 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 leading towards uh, Detroit uh, in those stat totals. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, with the prediction of four to three Habs, please. <laughs> so we appreciate that prediction. Amy says, uh, I smell Lucas Raymond snipe coming. And uh, winner winner says, can Dylan Larkin score a goal? That's true. He's <laughs> yeah. He Larkin's had a few good plays, but nothing yet. And uh, Yostification says, go Habs, go Flyers. So rooting against the Red Wings completely. <laughs> I see who he wants to win. <laughs> <laughs> Amon says, four to three Red Wings with the little octopus there. <laughs> so we'll uh, see what happens here as we're back to the in-game action. About 13 minutes left in the period in the, the defensive zone for Montreal. They're trying to break this one up. Uh, they've struggled to get the puck out of their own zone on a few occasions here. They've managed to, but it doesn't hit any players. Detroit's the first one back. Oli Oli Mata there. Now battling for the puck. Montreal actually comes away with it here, but they gave it away pretty quickly. <laughs> the Red Wings <laughs> heading back the other way with some speed, sending it behind the net. Cycling it around and to the point, a little bit of space, but no good shot available. Gossa Spare now dangling around uh, Montreal's forward. Oof. Wrap around by Dylan Larkin. There he is. That oh. one gets stopped, though. So Josh Anderson coming up. He just dumps Allen in and goes on a change. So Beatry behind the net. He takes a tumble in the corner. 
And now uh, David Ferran sends that one up the ice. Luckily, the Red Wings hang on to the puck there, despite uh, Jeff Petrie going for a fall. Yeah. I don't know how they hung on to it. <laughs> <laughs> so JT Confer is out there now. The Red Wings cycling this one around. I feel like it's been a while since we've had uh, some good zone time for the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that one. So Confer with a shot, that one gets blocked. Now at the point, great pass. Oh, man, Confer could not hang on to that one. Patrick Kane out there now. Drop pass. And just couldn't, too hot to handle on a few of those passes for the Detroit Red Wings. So Detroit looking for some opportunities to shoot. Perron out there can't get around Justin Barron. Barron showing some aggression. Now Montreal comes the other way. Alex Newhook, nice and slow, dumps that one in. And Montreal's going to hang on to the puck. Hudson out there along the boards, protecting the puck, going back to the point. Oof, nice move there by Hudson along the boards. He still has it. Passes it back to Savard. Savard, back to Hudson. Shot. That one's a stop. Trying too hard to get it to Hudson, I think. They have to just yeah. shoot it. Yeah. Canadians Connection says, big save by Reimer on Hudson. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's <laughs> for sure. But uh, I don't like Ooh. the shot selection there. I was hoping that Savard would have taken that shot. Yeah, I hit more of a direct uh, lane to the net, I feel. Yeah. So Montreal has a puck now. The crowd's come alive with Hudson out there. And Detroit's going to dump this one in. Oh, Dr. Detroit's saying uh, Jeff Petrie with the game-winning goal. <laughs> <laughs> Petrie's had a nice impact on this game so far. Yeah. Would not be surprised. And we got Josh chiming in with the let's go Kane, let's go Kane. Well... Patrick Kane does have 12, 12 points in nine games against the Habs, but uh, yep. for the Dylan Larkin fans out there, he, he's got 18 points in 28 games, so he can definitely be a difference maker as well. Good defensive play there by the Red Wings, uh, not allowing Montreal to get a shot off. Less than 10 minutes to go, still tied up 3-3, three to three, shots 28-28. to 28. Now through center. Detroit Red Wings dump that one in, go off on a change, and Mayu's there to pick up the puck. Of course, Mayu picks up his first NHL point in his first game today, picking up an assist on that first goal. Now, behind the net, it's uh, James Reimer out to play it. Now Detroit coming the other way with speed. It's a three-on-three. Three. Oof. Because he also spared his lays and takes a shot. He almost had a wide-open opportunity. <laughs> Goss to spare again with a long shot. That one stopped by Primo. And we're getting some go-habs goes in the chat <laughs> from she. And uh, Amy says, uh, make sure to send some good vibes to your teams with uh, some good go-habs goes and some let's go Red Wings as well. So lots of games on tonight. I'll try to do a little bit of an update from around uh, the league. Ottawa is up on Boston 2-0 uh, the last uh, few minutes of the third period. Uh, the Hurricanes currently losing 5-3 to three to the Blue Jackets. Um, the the uh, Capitals and Flyers still 1-1. One one. That's the one that Red Wings fans are going to be keeping an eye on the most. And just a little correction from earlier. Uh, earlier, it said that uh, the Philly goal came from Couturier. That's been changed, and it's now from Eric Johnson. Uh, shots are 18 to 14 for the Flyers in that one. Uh, pretty good game from our friend of the show, uh, Charlie Lindgren, who's made many appearances on our podcast, uh, Canadians Connection. So he's had a good game so far. And uh, currently, the Maple Leafs losing 4-2 to two to the Panthers. Uh, it's likely these two meet up in the first round. So there's a little preview there, and it's in the second period. Uh, the Kraken currently up, uh, are currently down 3-2 to two against the Jets. So that's uh, your updates from around the league here. So, of course, uh, with the playoffs happening, lots of different scenarios could play out. So you're definitely keeping an eye on all of those games. Uh, even if you're a Habs fan and you're looking at the draft uh, 
uh, the draft lottery wanting uh, the best percentage possible to get that first overall. Uh, you're probably watching that Ottawa game to make sure they win. Uh, so once again, we appreciate you all joining us here today for this live stream watch along. It's uh, still three to three. It's been back and forth. Montreal of the gate was much better, but this period it's been all Red Wings. And yeah, I would not be surprised to see the Red Wings go ahead by a goal here. But uh, I think that uh, Montreal is going to want to be careful. Um yeah, Caden Primo, terrible game so far for him. All three goals were absolutely Primo's fault. But James Reimer at the other end making some big saves, uh, standing on his head and uh, keeping his team in this one. Yeah, it's uh, I I have this like I was I was really like five four Montreal, but like now you know seeing Primo's game and and what goals have gone in, I, I get like a little stressed out when uh, Detroit has the puck in our zone now. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Canadian's connection says game winning goal from Sherbrooke's own David Perron. Wouldn't that be something to see here tonight? <laughs> so let us know your score predictions and uh, better yet, let us know who you think is going to score the next goal. We want to hear from you in that chat. Plenty of let's go Red Wings and go Habs goes coming through here. So keep those coming on. Oof. Primo gets uh, his feet knocked out from under him. The play continues. Primo remains down on top of the Detroit player. I can't see who that is. But uh, yeah, now Montreal the other way with, uh, I think, Detroit's short a man because they're underneath Primo, basically. Suzuki misses a shot, though. Yeah, it looked like that player just took a head dive. Yeah, that, that was <laughs> weird. <laughs> but uh, anyways, Montreal in the offensive zone here. Suzuki out there cycling it around. Shot from the point. Stopped by Reimer again. Nice save. Montreal hangs on to the puck. Sofkowski out there, dishing it back to the point. Now Hudson's there. Hudson with some moves yet again at the blue line, showing off. Long shot. Scores! I think <laughs> Slavkowski tipped it. That's a Hudson assist, though. What a move by Hudson. <laughs> oh, when? Long shots tipped by Uri Slavkowski. And that one goes in. Montreal up four to three now. So if that's uh, Slaps, that's 20. <laughs> yeah, that's 20 for Slaff. Two assists in two games for Hudson. The, oh. the, the composure just to hold it and not dump it in or, or try to make a pass. I, I... Yeah. The pressure on Hudson there and just taking his time and – yeah, David Perron directly in front of him, shooting it through Perron's legs. Perron looks silly on that one. Yeah, and of course Slavkovsky is standing in front with the perfect tip. That's so. What there you go. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. So that's uh, Hudson's first point at Bell Center. Uh, I believe that was Canadian's connection that uh, pointed that one out. And Canadian's Connection says, uh, I should have said that uh, Perron would end up in the net. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah with, I don't think Detroit will win. Oh, we get no. some go-habs in, in the chat too. Oh. So there you go. What a sequence of events there by the Montreal Canadiens. And they go ahead. Slavkowski with his 20th. Hudson with his second assist, and that was all Hudson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a good piece moving forward. <laughs> yeah, if you're not excited yet, wow. <laughs> Oof. Mayu's showing some aggression along the boards against Detroit there. He's oh, going to be yeah. careful. He's got to be careful. That could have been a slash almost. Mm -hmm. So about six minutes to go in this one. Four to three Montreal shots tied thirty to thirty. And we got some go habs goes right now. <laughs> so yeah, not you, what Lane Hudson did there. I don't think I've ever seen a defenseman pull that off. Yeah, like I, yeah, I, I, second game. Yeah, the second game. It already looks like an NHL or that's incredible. So Detroit, how soon do we think Detroit's gonna pull the goalie here? 
Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say they're going to be more, they're going to do it early, but not too early. I think it's going to be around like the two minute, three minute mark. Cause they don't want to pull it too early and, and, you know, cost the rest of the season. Detroit with a nice opportunity there. Couldn't be primo on that one. Now the puck goes all the way to the other end for icing. Bell center has got the Ole Ole chant going already. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so this is going to be a nail biter in these final five minutes here. Yeah. But hey, Detroit fans, last night's game, you saw it. Detroit turned it on. It was hot and heavy, and they ended up winning. So, yeah. Like Amy says, Detroit fans just trying to breathe right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we got some go haves goes in the chat from She, of course. And Amy also pointing out uh, the Ole song, Love It or Hate It. <laughs> so, and, uh, oops. slap 50 points. Yeah, 50 points slap. <laughs> And 20 goals. Uh, Canadian's Connection says Safkowski hit a bonus for 20 goals, so he gets uh, an extra <laughs> 250 grand. There you go. <laughs> I would love that bonus. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so less than five to go now. Detroit coming, trying to get through the blue line. They can't do it. Big hit by Slavkovsky. <laughs> Wrist shot from far. Caden Primo stops that one. And Bell Center has come alive. 4.30 to go, and Montreal is winning this one 4-3. to three. Slavkovsky from Hudson. Absolute hi highlight reel right there. I, I, I'm speechless at that Hudson move. I keep coming back to it, but wow. Yeah, well, you know, it, it kind of had the makings, you know. He, he had, like you mentioned before, he had those two good, you know, moves in the game where he was, like, showing the shiftiness and how creative he could be with that puck. And, and you know, third time's a charm in the game, I guess, for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've seen him do moves like that a few times throughout the game uh, as early as the first period, and it seemed pretty effective. I was a little bit worried that that was something that might not translate uh, into the NHL going forward. Uh, just because of how much more aggressive it can be. And yeah. yeah, on that goal, at least, David Perron really backed off as soon as he saw what Lane Hudson was doing. And wow, uh, Sherbrooke's own David Perron looking kind of silly on that one, not even being able to block the puck. Yeah, I, uh, David Perron, he's, he's definitely wants to, he's definitely be looking at that and being like, I should have done more on that one. He mm. gave, he gave the, the new guy a little too much space. For sure. <laughs> Uh, Jeremiah pointing out, it uh, looks like Washington is going to the playoffs, probably. The way things stand, that seems to be the most likely scenario. But, uh, of course, lots of hockey to go. Uh, Canadians oh. Connection says, meanwhile, in Florida, the Habs were outshot 31-4 to by the Panthers in the second period. Yikes, didn't see oh. that one. And these two are probably meeting up in the playoffs. So, oh, yeah, so oof. That's crazy. I've never seen a team score. That's got that's got to be a record of how many shots in a period. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we'll have to look this up. That's so lopsided. Feels like something that would happen to Montreal. Like if we're being honest, <laughs> for sure. It's uh, wow. That's lots of lots of mind blowing stuff happening tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So uh, just to let you guys know too, uh, we're approaching the end of the game here, but we will be. Uh, doing a post-game show. Make sure you stick around for uh, the final round. We'll uh, talk uh, about the game. We'll summarize where things are at, and uh, we'll uh, give you an opportunity to let us know your thoughts right after the game. So make sure you stick around, and uh, hopefully this one doesn't go too, too late, but you never know. This could be <laughs> headed to overtime as well. Regardless, we'll be here after the game. So Detroit in the offensive zone now. Four minutes to go. Oli Mata out there. Detroit just kind of cycling this one around, trying to set up here, but they can't do it, and that goes all the way to the other end. Got to, got to spare out there for the Detroit Red Wings. Patrick Kane as well. So coming through the blue line here, sending it back to the point. Slap shot, deflected, stopped by Primo. Ooh. Oof, good chances there by Detroit. Now Montreal clears that one out. Detroit's going to have to regroup again. Long pass. They managed to connect on that one. Confer is now out there. 
he loses a puck, and now Detroit's going to have to regroup yet again. 320 left. Montreal now has possession. Lane Hudson out there. Ne- next uh, possession that Detroit has in Montreal is when they're pulling their goalie. Yeah, I think so. Reimer out there to play it. Detroit coming through center here. It's Lucas Raymond out there. And Raymond still has the puck in the offensive zone, showing some moves there. Ben Chirot with a shot that hits Primo up high on the shoulder, and that gets stopped. Now Montreal manages to get up past the blue line. Reimer's still in the net. So Montreal now trying to defend this lead. They managed to get possession. Let Once again, Yoel Armia out there. Now Evans out there in the offensive zone. Evans just kind of cycles this one around, but Detroit gets to the puck first. Montreal trying to be aggressive on that forecheck, but they can't come away with it. But Matheson does, and he hammers that one in. Two minutes. Montreal causing some issues for Detroit, but odd man rush here. Two on two. Oof, whiffed on the shot. What a chance for Detroit. No. Oof, and an icing. The crowd doesn't like it. They're booing. I think Reimer's going to head out, and we'll get a pull goalie here. Oh, who whiffed? Who whiffed on that? That's. uh, I might have. I think it was Sprong. Yeah, I think it was Sprong. But yeah, that's that's unfortunate. That could have been the game right there. If you're Detroit, just everything towards Primo. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially when you look at the you know the last two goals that went out on Primo, they were uh, definitely uh, not good ones. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I, I I don't know. I I feel that uh, Detroit can definitely pick up pick up the pace here and uh, definitely be able to put the pressure on there but hopefully uh either make this a game or our season's over or potentially yeah. over potentially <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think uh yeah this is gonna be super intense i think mm-hmm. the blood pressure is gonna go up a little bit here dvorak out there to take the face off for montreal Shots 35 to 30 for the Detroit Red Wings now. Slap shot stopped. I think that actually missed. <laughs> Detroit still has possession here. Six on five with the empty net. Matheson with the puck. And you get a tumbling Detroit Red Wings player. Now Kane has the puck. Not a whole lot of space out there. So you're going to get some cycling around. That one misses. Kane out there with the puck again at the point. Dylan Larkin now passes it to Goss Spare back to Kane. Shot. That gets blocked by Dvorak. Kane with another shot that misses. Now David Perron out there too. Back to Goss Spare. Over to Kane. One minute to go. At the point, Goss Spare with the shot. Stopped by Primo. Covered up, and you get a melee in front of the net, in front of Primo. Oof. 53 seconds left. I was definitely, He's not yeah. there by Primo. I was going to say, yeah, because like I'm pretty sure those guys were out there uh, since the puck was dropped. So, I mean, it's been out there a little long. <laughs> Looks like uh, Detroit player going after Mayu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So once again, make sure you stick around with us after the game. We'll do a little recap here and give you guys a chance to talk about uh, this game that we watched here tonight. And just to let you know, uh, our next live stream, it's uh, to be announced. So make sure you hit subscribe, uh, hit the notification as well for off-season live streams. We will have some coming up. So we'd appreciate it if you hit subscribe. If you like tonight too, I also encourage you to hit that uh, like button and share with other hockey fans. And for those paying attention, Capitals and Flyers still tied one to one, less than five minutes in the third period. Whoa, that's that's going to be a one where a lot of people are watching, for sure. So 
Looks like a little time out there, and now we're going to go back to the game. So they're going to put out the top line. Raymond's out there. And 53 seconds to see if Detroit, the season on the line, if they're able to get anything here. So, Evans, Armia, Suzuki out there for Montreal. Got all their defensive guys out there. Yeah, that's just it. <laughs> Good call. Final minute. All right. So, Detroit scored with what, 26 seconds left last night's game? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> just want to put that out there, Detroit fans. Yeah. Oh, barely kept in. Great plays there by Detroit as Montreal nearly cleared it. They will this time. That one doesn't hit the empty net, though. I think, yeah, that's an icing. So back all the way to the other end here. 36.7 seconds to go. But, uh, yeah, sounds like uh, Montreal Canadiens are a little bit upset here. Uh, that that was called icing and the officials are going to recognize that that shouldn't have been an icing and it's going to be a face-off at center. Reimer's going to have to get back in the net. Oh, just crazy. <laughs> so Wings fans are in here. We've also, we've also got some go Habs goes going on. So 36.7 seconds to know what's going to happen. Oh, Wings get nice. possession here. Reimer immediately to the bench. <laughs> 30 seconds to save the season. Montreal, with the, they try to clear it, but I don't think they can. Battle along the boards here. They flip it out. Yeah, that comes out of the blue line. Wings come back in on side here, but Matheson gets the puck pretty quickly. Shot all the way down. Empty net. David Savard misses the net. 7.7 .7 seconds left, and it's an icing. 7.7 .7 seconds to go. Savard's heated right now. <laughs> oh. Just not enough pushback from Det Detroit here. Yeah, this is... Uh... I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, Detroit hasn't had a little bit more in them in these final minutes. Like yeah. they, they had a few chances earlier on, but uh, ever since the icings, it's not been much. Yeah, I think they just uh, just ran out of gas. So puck gets dropped. Five. Oh, score three point three. They tie it up. I believe that was Perron. Stop. No way. I was ready to count that down. Detroit ties it up. <laughs> four to four. Yeah. <laughs> Canadians connection got it right. David Perron with the goal. Oh, Wings man. fans. Wings fans. Where are you at? <laughs> yeah, don't all leave. <laughs> Clean oh. one face off right through Primo. Oh. Man. And, yeah, D to T. Perron just rifles this one in. What a bullet. Yeah. It looks like a deflection or something, but yeah, right through Caden Primo. They're all going crazy. So there you go. Wings fans are getting happy in the chat. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, this is 3.3 I... seconds and then overtime. I honestly did not expect that, especially with 7.7 .7 seconds left. <laughs> Was that a Debrinket tip? Oh, off, off, off Montreal player, it looks like it. Yeah, we're getting overtime. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, we're getting some overtime tonight. So, Wings fans, you got to be happy about that one. Um, yeah, this has been an incredible game. The chat is busy. I, I got to do my best to keep up on it. But uh, like T-Bone says, what a game almost speechless here the fact that detroit tied that one up that's <laughs> crazy uh canadians connection says 
all four games this season between Montreal and Detroit have gone to overtime. Yeah. Wow. Well, five to four. Canadians? So, yeah, five. To, <laughs> it's going to be five to four somehow. So we'll see. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to have to take another quick look at uh, the playoff implications here. But uh, I think this one point at least helps Detroit's case here. Yeah, because I think it puts into. Yeah, so points. one point for Detroit and a regulation loss uh, f- for uh, the Capitals and the Penguins. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's how Detroit's going to have to get in if they don't win this. And uh, right now, the Capitals actually are up two to one on uh, the Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, so there's also (laughs) that to consider. Uh, Three minutes left in that one. So Uh, interesting. And like Amy says, so how's everyone feeling now? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that's that sums it up. And uh, of course, so. Saying we need uh, Flyers to win, and good for Detroit. That's awesome. And Rocket Sports asking, okay, fans, who scores the OT goal? Yeah, I think we need the predictions here. I'll I'll defer to you to start this one off, Nathan. Give me one quick uh, name. Uh, I think uh, Montreal. It's gonna be it's gonna be uh, Brendan Gallagher and uh, Jeff Petrie for the Detroit Red Wings. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna. Oof, I, I'm feeling Ben Sherratt. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling Ben Sherratt for the Wings somehow, and then for the Montreal Canadiens, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Slavkovsky. Oh yeah, it's gonna be interesting. So OT underway, three on three for five minutes. Detroit leading shots, thirty nine to thirty, and it's tied four to four. As a uh, David Perron tied that one up in the dying seconds. So, race to the puck, Caulfield versus Raymond. Raymond gets there first, but Caulfield ends up with the puck. Suzuki now. Lane Hudson out there with uh, Suzuki and uh, Caulfield. And they're going to circle back here. They don't like what they see. Now, Nick Suzuki with the puck. Drops it to Caulfield. Shot, wrist shot stopped. Rebound, misses. Now Detroit with the puck. Stretch pass. Dylan Larkin with a breakaway. Stop by Primo. Larkin <laughs> hangs on to the puck. Pass to, to cost the spare misses. Oh, great sequence there for both teams. Yeah. I thought it was game over. <laughs> so, three on three still. Kane out there. Backhand shot, that's stopped by Primo. So Lane Hudson behind Primo taking his time here. So both teams changing up here, taking it slow, 319 to go in this overtime. Oof. I'm excited <laughs> about this. Now New Hook coming in with speed. He falls. Oh, I think that might be a tripping. Power play for Montreal. <laughs> Kane to the box. If oh, it wasn't dramatic man. enough, we get Kane to the box. Oh. It's going to oh. be a four on three power play for the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal, no luck on their first two power plays. 0 oh, and 2 right now. Yeah. So Kane to the box for tripping. Yeah, new hook there. Good heads up play by him to go in with speed there. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's good that he went in speed because I don't think that penalty would have been called. <laughs> Canadians connection says Capitals scored into an empty net, two to one caps. What? That's a head scratcher. Yeah, we'll have to figure that one out. I, I I don't know the implications of that, but I believe Philadelphia pulled their goalie on that play. I think it was an all or nothing sort of deal. So Caulfield out there with Matheson. All right. Suzuki passes it back to Matheson. 
Over to Caulfield. Suzuki Ooh. now in the middle. Matheson, slap pass. That one gets broken up. Detroit trying to come the other way. Yeah, they're going to try and clear this one out. They do. They send it all the way to the red line. Now the Montreal Canadiens coming the other way. Slavkovsky there. Over to Matheson. Cole Caulfield here coming through the middle. Minute 20 left on the power play. 2.30 to go in the in the overtime period. Matheson here to Suzuki. Passes over to Caulfield. Montreal being very patient. One ten left on the power play. Matheson with a slap shot. That one's stopped by Reimer. Montreal <laughs> hangs on to possession. Caulfield here. Passes it over to Suzuki. Back to Caulfield. And Suzuki again. Passes over to Matheson. 45 seconds to go. Caulfield with a one-timer. That one doesn't get Ooh. to the net. That goes all the way around. Oof. So, Caulfield coming in with speed now. 33 seconds left on the power play. Hudson out there now. Less than 30 on the power play. A minute 30 in the overtime. Detroit being very aggressive, taking Hudson off the puck, and they send it all the way down. Now Primo out there to play it. 20 seconds left on the power play. Not a good power play at all by the Canadians. couple of yeah. shots, but nothing too dangerous. Some missed nets and too much patience. Yeah, no, I agree with you on all those points. Three seconds left on the power play. Gallagher out there now. We're going to add some four on four. Hudson with some space, shoots, misses. So back to even strength here. One minute. We have four on four until the next whistle. Gallagher going off on a change and did not collect the puck. (laughs) Almost was too many men. Detroit with a shot. That one can't get through. (laughs) Mayu behind the net now. Less than 40 seconds. He sends it back behind the net. Now Montreal coming up. Matheson through center. He carries it in. Gives it away right at the blue line. The wing's the other way. But Mayu gets back with some speed. He stops it. Mayu coming up the middle here. Over the blue line. He's going to take a shot himself. Stopped by Reimer. Reimer's going to hang on to it. He thought he was going to play it, but he does not. And just an update uh, for the Flyers versus Capitals. Still 2-1 to one for the Washington Capitals here. Matheson turned over the puck rather than pass it to Mayu, pointed out by Canadians Connection. And that's exactly what I was thinking, too. And then Mayu went in and did everything himself and actually got a shot off. So, <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. And people are saying, uh, shoot out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. A scale to one to, of one to ten. How nervous are we? Yeah, I think Isaac's response there sums it up. Ten. <laughs> so five seconds left. Dylan Larkin trying to come in with speed. Will he get a shot? No, doesn't get a shot. Stop. That was blocked by Suzuki. It actually looked like the Red Wings got a shot off there. Oh, yeah. He took that in the back. Slow to get up. Slow to get up there. So heading to the shootout now. Oof. So (laughs) crazy, crazy. I mean, Montreal disappointing on the power play here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially from the top four. (laughs) Yeah, that's just it. Like, they didn't generate nearly enough. I think the Red Wings had some good opportunities, but... uh, Yeah, I I was expecting a little bit more intensity in that overtime period outside of that first minute, maybe, where it went back and forth. Yeah. But, uh, well, here we are. Going to a shootout. (laughs) Yeah. So, Capitals still up 2-1 to on the Flyers. Uh, Looks like the Flyers pulled their goalie because this was an all-or-nothing game for them. They had to win it to get into the playoffs, but uh, the Washington Capitals uh, managed to score the essentially their game winning goal on an empty net there. Um, absolutely crazy turn of events. Uh, once we're finished this one, we'll have to look up and see what exactly transpired in that game. 
Yeah. Uh, Canadians Connection says, we want to see Hudson in the shootout. I'd be down. Yeah. Let us know who you think is going to get the shootout winner, actually. Ooh. We'd love to hear from all of you in the chat. And just a reminder, too, after this shootout, uh, we're going to stick around for a few minutes to talk about it. So keep active in the chat, send in some questions and comments. And uh, also, if you like tonight, uh, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and we'll be back with some more live streams throughout the offseason as well. Caulfield with the first opportunity in the shootout. He comes down. Oh. Stop by Reimer. Cole Caulfield with not a whole lot there. Yeah. Try to go by a full up. Yeah. And he was it going sounds, like slow too. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like Washington uh, just clinched the playoffs. They won in regulation. So I wonder if the Red Wings know about this yet. But anyway, Dylan Larkin Ooh. with an opportunity. Stop by Primo. He made a nice move, and Primo doing a good job there. So, Amy Johnson with a little update here. Flyers had to pull the goaltender because they had to win in regulation. It was a risky move, but understandable. And that, yeah, that's exactly it. That's why the Flyers pulled their goalie when it was tied. Oh, we got Lane Hudson. Lane Hudson with his opportunity, number 48. He's showed a lot of skill so far this game. What can he do in the shootout? He goes in slow. Nice move, but can't finish it. <laughs> I think a little poke check there by Reimer almost. Yeah, let's see. Tied his stick up with a goaltender. Isaac says sad. Good shootout so far, but the goalie is standing tall here. Canadian's Connection says Hudson got his chance. Now, Mayu, please. <laughs> I'd be curious to see that too. Depends on if I think Detroit scores here, I think. Yeah. We got Raymond out there with his opportunity. He goes wide. Shot stopped by Primo. There you go. Primo with another save there. So we're going into the third round of the shootout here. No goal scored yet. Great lateral movement by Primo. Good job following the puck there. And it's Suzuki that comes out for the Montreal Canadiens. So Suzuki here, he's going to go wide, comes through the hash marks, lots of patience, oof, nice <laughs> move, he tried to flip it up over Reimer, but Reimer flashes the leather here. <laughs> so SM chimes in with, I hope Slav will score and shoot out, cheers from Slovakia, we have uh we have uh, 3.48 a.m. here. So thanks for tuning in all the way from Slovakia. That's crazy. We appreciate Ooh. that. And glad that you're having some fun with us. Now Detroit with their shot. Patrick Kane scores. Oh. Oof. There you go. <laughs> the Red Wings come away with a shootout victory. <laughs> Well, my prediction and, was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Detroit misses the playoffs after all this, too. Oh, man. You think so, they know? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I, I hope not. They but the way they're happy. celebrating, they don't look too happy about it. Good season oh, for Detroit. You know what? This yeah. was a valiant effort. If you're a Red Wings fan, lots of positives here. There's, yeah. <laughs> wow. You can't... To, you can't hate the progression here from the Red Wings. And uh, good effort. Uh, yeah. They got it done in the shootout. But, uh, yeah, not enough to get them into the playoffs. So make sure uh, you stick around here. We're going to do a short post-game show. So make sure that you get in all your questions into the chat. Uh, we're not going away quite yet as uh, the Detroit Red Wings come away with a win here. and. Uh, And it is the last round. Just a little reminder here off the top here. 
uh, to make sure if you haven't already. Hit uh, like and subscribe if you liked what you saw tonight. We appreciate you all joining us on this live stream. Hit the notification bell too so you can join all of our off-season live streams. We'll definitely be doing some along the way just because the NHL regular season is over. It's not mean we're going away either. We have plenty of content uh, coming out for you. Uh, just make sure you search it all up. Head over to THN.com slash Montreal. That's the Hockey News Montreal. And you can find all sorts of great content on there. Game day post. You can get the game recap on there pretty soon, as well as a game preview. Coverage on Laval Rocket as well. Follow us on all our social media at Rocket Sports. And check out our podcast that comes out every single Saturday. Canadians Connection at CanadiansConnection.fm on all of your favorite streaming platforms. And every Monday on our YouTube channel right here. So, five to four shootout victory for the Detroit Red Wings. And Nathan, I'll just get you to sum up this game as best as you can. Uh, it it was uh, it was honestly, I think it was a roller coaster game. Uh, you know, for I mean, at least for the emotions uh, for the Red Wings. Um, when it came to the gameplay, I think, and you know, when you look at uh, how the game progressed, I think uh, the Red Wings kind of turned it on uh, in that. You know, last, I mean, really, the last couple minutes of the third period to allow them to score that uh, the tying goal uh, to bring them to the to this point. But I mean, for the Montreal Canadiens, you know, uh, they had they had opportunities and and uh, you know had a two goal lead and and weren't able to capitalize. That's you know two nights in a row against the Detroit Red Wings. But at the same time, uh, good on Detroit for you know battling hard and and continue to believe in themselves to get to where they were and be able to win the game tonight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the final score, Red Wings beat the Habs 5-4 to four in the shootout. CH goals coming from Newhook, Gallagher, Caulfield, Slavkovsky. Um, the Red Wings uh, shootout winner coming from Patrick Kane in the sixth shot of the shootout, the last attempt in uh, the opening three rounds of the shootout. All the Detroit go- Red Wings goals comes from uh, Moritz Sider, Joe Valeno, Daniel Sprung, and David Perron. David Perron scoring 1956 into the third period to send this to extra time nothing happens in ot and it goes all the way to the shootout the first five shots get stopped and unfortunately the uh or fortunately if you're a detroit red wings fan <laughs> you you win the game in the shootout but unfortunately the playoffs are done so the Washington Capitals end up winning their game in regulation versus the Philadelphia Flyers to get into the playoffs uh, Red Wings won't make it. The Penguins won't make it. It's too bad. Good progression from the Red Wings this season. I think they showed a lot of heart in this game. They did their best, uh, but unfortunately, uh, they come up short. And it was all about, uh, I think, you can blame Alex Ovechkin if uh, you want to be mad at someone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, he, oh, sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say, he just, I, I feel like he, he stuck the team on his back and uh, started scoring goals in bunches uh, in that. Uh, last couple weeks of the regular season for him yeah for sure and uh oddly enough uh it was a back-to-back with uh montreal and detroit home and home both with the same score five to four this time it was in the shootout yesterday it was an overtime so yeah pretty similar games overall um in your mind was there kind of a turning point in this one uh to be honest i'd have to say um just uh, it's got to be the the play call that left that uh uh, face off in the defensive zone against the Montreal Canadiens, which allowed David Perron to uh, have that shot from the point and uh, get it, let it go into the net. I think uh, that has to be the turning point of the emotion uh, because, you know, with 7.7 seconds left, you know, caught myself, you know, almost calling the game. And then, you know, eventually they scored four seconds later. So uh, I got to say that was the turning point in the game for sure. For sure. And uh, for the Wings fans here, I actually like this comment uh, coming in from Guy. Wings fan here, what a two-day stretch of hockey. We almost made it. By the way, you guys are going to be scary. Cheers. So we appreciate that. And uh, we'll uh, continue along here. We'll pull up uh, some uh, chats here along the way as well. As uh, some Let's Go Red Wings are still coming through. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you there. The turning point really has to come down to that uh, David Perron goal at, right at the end of the game. Um, unexpected, uh, Nick Suzuki was not able to uh, get possession off of that faceoff. And uh, just a great shot there from Perron. I didn't realize he had such a good point shot on that. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate uh, that uh, that one went all the way uh, to the shootout the way it did, only for the Red Wings to end up not making the playoffs, but still valiant effort overall, a ton of heart. Um, my favorite play of the game, I have to give it out to one Lane Hudson for his assist on that Uri Slavkovsky goal. Uh, that Lane Hudson with some great moves on David Perron. Uh, David Perron looked... Uh, pretty confused and shocked by the skill this kid had. Uh, then Lane Hudson shoots the puck through Perron's legs. And uh, of course, Slavkovsky with the tip is 20th goal and his 50th point of the season. Uh, what is your play of the game? Uh, my play of the game is going to have to be, um, you know, just uh, the, actually I'm going to, the, the non, the non play of the game I feel is, is going to be, you know, just King Primo uh not being as good with uh with his uh tracking down the puck yeah um in that second period um you know my 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 play of the game uh i I wanted to say hudson but you know what i think another one would be you know gallagher getting on the board early as he did um in that first period to uh to you know to show that you know for a veteran he's able to uh continue to put put the puck in the net uh even uh for games that don't uh, matter as much for sure. I just wanted to give a little shout out to SM all the way from Slovakia. Uh, SM says uh, my favorite player is, of course, uh, Slav. Uh, they have had a great uh, chemistry with the uh, Suze and Caulfield. I don't know much players on Detroit. Uh, also, uh, SM follows that up with, by the way, Faravarhi from the Capitals is also so. Sl- Slovakia. Uh, so it looks like uh, he is not uh, joining our national team for the world championship, but Slav and uh, uh, Simon Nemec will. Uh, they likely will. I'd love to see that too. So plenty to watch out for. And uh, Faravarhi, I believe, uh, Washington Capitals still in the playoffs. So you got to be excited about that. Regardless, great night for uh, Slovakian hockey. That's for sure. Um, pulling up from the Canadians connection, ice time, Lane Hudson. 23-32, Logan Mayu, uh, 21-14. So the two young D uh, who had great games each individually, uh, getting a lot of minutes there, which was nice to see for sure. Uh, circling back to misplays of the game, because I feel like it's important to get to it. I feel like every goal on Primo was a misplay of the game, except mm-hmm. for the shootout winner, which looked pretty good. Uh, Primo, of course, you know, w- looking at the ref and not playing to the whistle, leading to a goal was bad. Uh, a lo- that fluky goal there, too, by Daniel Sprung uh, from mm-hmm. behind the goal line. Uh, the first goal that went directly through him from Moritz Sider. Um, yeah, I guess the David Perron goal was a pretty good one, uh, but mm-hmm. uh, Primo still had clear vision on it. So, yeah, I'd say my misplay of the game is every goal on Primo for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Amy Johnson asks, uh, so uh, with uh, both teams out of the playoffs, is there a team that uh, any of you will be rooting for during the playoffs? I'd be curious to hear from uh, all of you, uh, I guess, Pittsburgh out of the playoffs. I think that, that would have been our choices. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, actually. It's, it's difficult to say. I think just in general, I'm excited for NHL playoffs and the World Championships, too. I'd still like to see some of those Habs play. Um, maybe Winnipeg? You know, you get yeah. a couple of Habs connections there with Toffoli and uh, Monaghan. So, and of course, a Canadian team in there too. So I'd, uh, I'll be keeping an eye on that one. Uh, who do you have your, your eyes on for this playoff? Well, I'm going to keep the theme uh, Canadian and I'm uh, going to be watching uh, the Edmonton Oilers. Um, this this has to be their year. I know at the beginning of the year, it's been a little touch and go for them, but, uh, you know, they seem to have been able to find the pieces uh, to get them to where they are. But uh, when you have Dreisaitl and McDavid going to the playoffs again, um, you definitely want to see, you know, it'd be good to see, you know, those two players actually hoist the cup and, you know, hoist it in Canada as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mike G chimes in with a shout out to French Canadian David Perron and his one timer. Mon Dieu. <laughs> it's true. That was a great goal by uh, David Perron there. Canadians Connection says Lane Hudson had four giveaways, but Matheson led the Canadians with giveaways with five. Oh. I would say that Matheson's giveaways were far more impactful, to be completely honest. Uh, I didn't really notice any of Lane Hudson's giveaways, so that probably votes pretty well. But Matheson, like there was that one sequence, I think, in the first period where it was like four attempts to make a clean pass out of the zone, and he could not do it. They were all giveaways. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I agree with you on those points. Uh, those giveaways are definitely 
Um, they, they definitely, Masson's give away, actually, like they showed that they were going to be an issue versus uh, Hudson's. For sure. So we're going to wrap up here in just a couple minutes, but send in any comments or questions you might have. We'll uh, do our best to, to give you a shout out and, and everything along the way here too. So first I want just a little reminder, head over to THN.com slash Montreal to check out uh, the post game coverage and uh, all your uh, articles throughout the summer. Uh, we don't go on a break uh, throughout the summer. We'll still be here to bring you all sorts of great uh, Montreal Canadiens content. Uh, THN.com slash Montreal. Make sure you bookmark it. Also follow us on social media at Rocket Sports on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And look out for our weekly podcast every single Saturday on uh, CanadiansConnection.fm or on your favorite podcasting app. Some of great content on this YouTube channel as well. Just earlier today, if you're a Habs fan and you want to uh, start following the Laval Rocket, there's a playoff push coming this weekend. And Amy Johnson hosts a couple of great shows on this channel. Uh, the Rocket Hockey Report actually came out earlier today, so make sure you watch that right now. The latest one entitled The Vowel Levels Up, Mayu Recall to NHL, Jack Eye and Touch Added, or uh, Jack Eye and Tuck Added. So make sure you check that out along with all of our other great content on this channel. So please leave a like and subscribe. We appreciate you all watching along with us. Uh, make sure that uh, you continue to. Uh, check out all of our content throughout the summer we'll be here for sure and nathan this has been a great season doing this with you it's uh the final game we'll be streaming but of course look out for some more live streams throughout the summer yeah it was a pleasure it's a pleasure always doing these with you michael and uh enjoyed it with all the viewers as well we appreciate it and thank you very much we'll see you soon um rocket sports your inside link to the to the montreal canadians hey!